Hello everyone, welcome back to Launchpoint Draft Cup. We're doing our eighth one this time. I'm gonna be your host, Butters, joined by our co-host, or I guess you could also say another host, Gordon. <laughs> Uh, Joanne, but yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's funny how you said "welcome back," even though this is actually the introduction. So well, welcome to. <laughs> if you really well, think about it, it's all a continuation of the last draft cup, taking true. in the information that you learned from the last and using it for this one. True, and honestly, to be fair, there is a lot of people that usually plays in the, in the last for draft cup that plays like after again because you're still not banned. You can just have fun until you're actually overranked. Yeah. yeah. But to start us off today, we've got two wonderful teams, iPad Gods and Popgun Low Ink Tier List to start us off for no. our groups round. Yep. And now these teams are actually interesting for uh, for this round one. For iPad Gods, uh, for some of you that mostly would have known, that Metal Cup actually played yes up yesterday, and iPad Gods actually played in that tournament, the whole pickup, and they got top eight. But for Popka's lowing list, this is a uh, surprising thing as well. Balavok, the captain, actually won the tournament. So we're going to see an interesting match for them in Clan Blitz at least, ma mainly. Let's see if he can. Hold up to his expectations. He, he's a tribe starter on sticks. He's gonna be nuts. Uh, well, hopefully, if he's if his style is gonna be like yesterday, he's gonna play like nuts. But oh, uh, we'll definitely be seeing in just a few moments. Yeah, but just speaking of just a few moments, we can also go over the maps. Our first map to start today is gonna be on Tower Control Inkblot Art Academy. How do you feel about this map? Okay, now talking to Ancho uh, Ink Blood Art Academy, that's a questionable. Well, not really questionable. It seems pretty okay, uh, but mostly in the first checkpoint, you would need to have a big like trouble over it, because you would need to basically you're in, you're condensed, so you're gonna have a little bit of issue there. But what about you, butters? Definitely. The th main thing about tower control, and honestly, a lot of stuff to do with Inkblot, it really goes to about every single um, mode that it has. It's about getting up onto that platform. If you can get up onto that platform, you can hold the enemy team in their own base fairly easily. But it also works in the exact reverse, making it very hard for the opposing team to get up onto that platform and grit that stranglehold on your team. By platform, do you mean the sniping platform or the statue? Uh, it's under tree. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah, then that makes sense. If you... But, okay, hey, look, there's teams. This is new, and it's Fog. Thank you, Move, for the graphics, by the way. This is actually hot graphics that we can see. This card is off. But we'll get straight on to the match right now. As we were talking about it, Cloud Art Academy, Tower Control. We're going to be seeing some weapons here. It's very interesting. Along with the Ju the Kenta Jr. For those who have been keeping up with the, a lot of stuff recently, the Kenta Jr. is going to play a lot recently. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they come out of this play. For Whiffer and is going to be taking one down with them, but unfortunately isn't going to be finding anyone else other than that. It was a good trade off to the start, but mostly in, in this start game, it's just all basically on pain and control. But if you see the hot shot going down, but if you see, see the K Jr. and the Nice is actually still holding up. And the Ashley, but you see the mini having brain ready, they're having all these plus ways, they can go for plus, but they need to kill off one of the armors or actually the Nod from Hawker's Lord Awake Lift and actually saw a push right there. The Junior Junior is going to and now they're going for the bubble, taking out the team, taking out not only the uh, Tri-Slot, but the Squirt for a long time. As they are just holding into the base, it's time to talk about the same thing that as soon as they get the match, it's super hard for them to get the match. But fortunately, the Hawker's Lord Awake Lift is going to be able to do that. No, this 
Octo Shot isn't going to be letting them take it so Staggering their push back. isn't taking the tower any But it's going to be four shot right Yeah, but you, but you see that Ava has to the armor, and you do see Aether coming out from, I think, I don't know, but the Ava is going to be the tower. The Ava is going to be the there's two down inside the eye, like three down on the side of the eye, again. So we see a pop that's going to kill us. Be able to do some to protect us. I've had some in pop gun taking the top of the last one. He's trying to hold them out to take the dude right here. He's going to be taking out the junior and trap, which is going to be a sentry pick. So the junior is going to be going down once again here. Two down on the side of pop gun. Make that three. Go into the quad. That's on the far side and trying to get them out of that position. And with the force pressures as well on the side of high back they can definitely do another push like that again and kill off the other the second section. But as you see right now that Jaden, the 96, will be getting for the game. I think we're still pushing and they can kill off the e but with the bubble save, it, there's still 3v2 on the side of I by God, and they can beat the second segment, but we see that the script are actually going back and trying to save. But we see Balak Austin trying to go for one more back, he messes up a little bit, and I saw Joe going down, and the KG going down, so that's more now on the side of the top of the low range, and we see the I by God actually to the final checkpoint now. And he's going to get the As we're going to be seeing the KO right here. iPad Gods is going to be grabbing that first match. Pop Gun. Pop Gun's glowing tier list definitely have some work to do to get the next match. And what's next is actually going to be Splash of Dancho V. So a lot of work that they need to do would mostly work on the stalemate on a stalemate mode actually because for TC Inkblot iPad Gods actually had an advantage because they had so much movement potential and with the common they're also relying on mobility so if there's something like Raymaker as well that would have helped out really well but Pop can steal this they have an Enzap, a tri slosher a Scripper and a Octoshop if I remember correctly yes that was exactly what they had and they were a bit too aggressive throwing themselves at any advantage push they could and honestly going a bit too far in some scenarios and not letting that not cut catch up to them and allow for the farther range with that hmm. yeah honestly what they should have it done well what they should have in this comp because they have to try something not they can use some the advantage on this on this map for sure but mostly on this I feel like they might need a bit more paint more because I don't know. I just feel that like they need more paint because I fetch God's comp, they can go fully ahead and go straight aggro ball on the side of Popkin's low and glass. They have a bit of delay. I feel like they need a, another gun in the But It's definitely gonna be very interesting to see the comps coming in here, especially since we're going on to answer at least on the flat zone. As we're gonna be seeing almost the exact same comp coming out of uh, iPad God was almost the exact same comp also coming out of tier of uh, Popgun's ink glowing tier list as we're gonna be seeing the cage Junior though switch out with the Tenebrel. Very interesting pick right here. Well it's a interesting pick that they switch for the for the Bella, but that's a Bella with bubbles if I remember correctly. So that's actually a good trade-off because the Bella can actually go straight on his own and they and they could just pop and they have more coverage at least. And for the bubbles uh, it's a uh, bonus from what they had before. But as we see right now, that was two down on the side of iPad Gods, I, if I remember correctly. So for that, they're going so capsule, but wait, the tri slash is DC'd. The tri slash has indeed DC'd from this match. Oh, no, huh. never mind. Oh, we're, nope. Okay. Nope. It just looks like it from over from our side. As we're going to be seeing the ball, uh, as we're going to be seeing the Squiffer going in 
with the baller. Gonna be fine getting his zone for them, but being drastically put out of position. But un is fortunately gonna be going down. Though they had a lot of good movement right there, it was unfortunately not enough for them. As we're gonna be seeing iPad gods holding down their zone zone right now and looking for their opening to try and get up to the top flat and hold that. They find their opening with that 10 right there as they are just pushing back Pop Gun's lowing tier list right here as Tristosh tries to go for the flank is unfortunately going to be going down and not going to be finding a pick right there as the Octo Shot is readying themselves for that inkjet going for it right now as they are going to be trying to find picks and stop them from using their specials and getting kills right here. We'll be playing the sneak on Valwak but that's actually really crucial because that was the start of the push as we saw the knowledge and the scripter of Garrett and I think that was Sina uh it's someone from Sia, uh, sorry, but they they were just waiting for Valvark to push so they can have the advantage, but we see the Ipecon just capping the zone and just taking it as their own right now, but all specials aren't ready on that time, so they had no really way to push out, but as you see again, Popkin's low, lowing kill, it's, it's just throwing themselves in again, because they have no specials or anything, they were really just panicking at this point definitely can be seen here as they're trying to use their specials together though they're though ipad god sees that and just immediately counter specials them as we're just going to be seeing this inkjet go off right now and get the final kills here and that is going to be a ko as there is no time for the rest of the team to spawn back little bit at the end had Team iPad Gods, extremely aggressive comp and amazingly good at finding those openings and just using a crow using it like a crowbar and opening up any type of weakness that they can find. And this is another thing of saying that you practice with your team. Because, like I said before, I picked out that you played a Metal Cup yesterday together. So they have so much synergy from there. Even though it's a one mode, they have so much synergy on what they can play at. And definitely battling uh, Eli and Valorar as well yesterday. So they know what they would play, so they can capture them immediately. And also, like, we never really noticed it, but... When Popkin's slowing glitch, they traded the, they traded their other support. I think that was a zap to a junior, which was a bit more pain. But again, the Slayer comp that they had for iPad guys, they really just never hold back, and they took advantage of it. Next up on our map list, though, we've got Clam Blitz on Surgeon Shipyard. This actually was seen. I actually was able to commentate last time over this for iPad gods and they were amazing at this. It's going to be very interesting to see how they do this time around and if they are going to be trying to bring that K Jr. back into play, they love using that K Jr. Yeah, oh wait, they're not this time actually. That's a surprise thing, but they have on for Jaden uh, for the bubbles instead. But as we see on the side of iPad of lowing teal list, uh, we do see the Jr. and we do see the Tri Soldier back again. And if you see from yesterday, well, Valwalk clutch for clutch for the team with the with the clamplets. As we will be seeing the rest of the team one go down on Team iPad God. This is going to be seen by Pop Guns and is trying using that to leverage their ability to go forward, taking out two people in the mid right now as they have total control over mid. As Team iPad God is forced to be stuck in their base, as the rest of the Team Pop Guns are throwing clams to each other and trying to make that super. The Nautilus right here is trying to find themselves a they're gonna get armor and ink at the same time as they are gonna be trying to score here. They do get the clam in the basket as that time is taking away, finding another person, and that's gonna be a wipe on the side of iPad gods. As Team Pop Gun's low ink tier list is getting themselves clams into that basket as that point total is just taking away. Again, this is Pop Gun Popkin's low ink tier list actually taking the advantage here and not to get that wipe at the story. Gave them so much penalty for the side of iPad Gods that making it down to 50 is a pretty good story because that takes two clams. But we see right now the iPad Gods actually having a two down as well. But there's no clams on the side of iPad Gods to actually have a push, but they have specials right now. But they do have the pity as well, so they get pushed from there. As we're going to be seeing Team iPad Gods sitting in mid, getting all their specials ready. The Bubbles are ready. The Ooh! All three oh, of them are oh. going to be going down to that tri slash right there as they all grouped up. The hammer is going to be coming off from the 10th as we are going to be seeing them take out the tri slash 
go for the Nautilus right here. Gonna be going down to them though. Essential pick, because that might stop Pop Guns from pushing in as they don't really have an entry right now. Well, actually, they still have the squib, so they can actually push up instead. And the Nauth power was actually really good, but the Junior actually putting up armor after the Nauth that they will not have a push right now. But again, that triple from Firewalk for the try was actually really crucial because of the mistake the iPad God did with trying to go in all together on top. They should have went from the side. As we're going to be seeing Team iPad Gods take two down on Pop Guns and taking mid advantage right here. The tent is just sitting under their basket, allowing the team to jump in. We're going to be seeing at least one clam, super clam, go in. And at least it is a start with another clam going in. We're going to be seeing the uh, mini right here going in, throwing clams, bringing it down to 62. A really good push on their side, but it is not good enough in this scenario. With two minutes and 20 seconds left on that clock, they still have time to work with, but not enough, not enough to stay comfortable. Again, that was a good start, like you said, but it was mostly a panic play right there because we saw that everyone for the side of the Ivacons were just going in slowly and slowly because they didn't have anything set and they saw the three others alive. Mostly scared of not, I, I feel. But for right now, we see the Nod and the Ten battling each other. Whoever gets the win out of it, or I guess they're jumping out, they're trying to see who's going to get crucial of mid control. This, this Ten view is doing exactly what they need to do and holding mid perfectly so that the rest of their team can push up. The Inkjet is going to be coming out here, finding that Ten kill right there, but is going to be going down and putting three down on Pop Guns as it's just the Squiffer left as the rest of Team iPad Gods is going in for that. Gonna be taking them out on the drop right here as they are have total control over mid and looking to push into that base with a minute and 20 seconds left on that clock. They do have the advantage. Try the tri slots finding the exact position that they should have been in. Again, unfortunately, unable to take out the inkjet user as the rest of Team iPad Gods is looking to make a push, getting that clam in, bringing it down to 61 points as the rest of them are throwing clams, bringing it down to 52. All they need is one more clam in that basket, and they have taken lead as they do take lead right here as the tent is just sitting in their base, pushing them further, bringing it, the points even further down. One minute left on that clock. Desperation time is now in for Popcorn's lowing tier list. For the side of iPad Gods, making it down to 25 is actually a really good uh, chance for a minute, but again, for Popcorn's heal list, they have their mana benches right now, and if they kill, uh, killing them, kill for the forage and the ten again, but the archer going down, wait, that's a way to slay her down. They can have adventures for shit, but 30 seconds remaining, there's not seeming like there's any chance for Popcorn to kill us to actually win this, unless iPad Gods does another mistake like they did before and group up all together, so the try can actually get a triple or even to not get the triple right there. It seems like the try slash has fallen into try time, which is where they go up to the exact same position every single time. And we're going to be seeing the team iPad God score right here with seven seconds left on that clock. Pop Guns low in tier list is in full desperation right now, trying their darndest to get anything going here with one person left on Team iPad Gods just sitting in their base, not letting them go. The ball is going to be going down with that time taking away. I don't even think they have enough time to score at this point. This is just going to keep on going. Team I Pop Guns not even pushing in, and that's going to be game. They were too late on the clock, and also if I because they could have done a KO. If really, if the hammer player actually threw the hammer really quickly instead of waiting, they could have just KO'd it right there. But even though the match seemed a bit, bit scrappy, GG's a lap lappy actually getting an 18 kill streak. But low Valvok and I think that was Eli actually going up in above 10 kills as well. Definitely. A very interesting match. iPod Gods just never letting up on their aggression. And Pop Guns low wing tier list just couldn't handle it. And they just fell apart. But. This is why you. This is what you call turning synergy right there, folks. Play via team before the draft cup. It will help you a lot. <laughs> well, we'll be taking a small little break here as we're going to be waiting for the next match to be ready it up. We'll catch you in a very brief bit.
Welcome everyone to the start of the next round as we're going on to the second match. Starting us off today, we've got ourselves taking naps and crinkly doodles. I'm gonna also still been your host and still will be your host. Uh, Butters joined me once again by... Uh, I'm Joyan again. Uh, and yeah, Butters, you might, you might be here for a while. So, uh, everyone, yeah, be comfortable with Butters. He, he's nice. I am great. But yeah, so now maybe we can switch off to the... <laughs> <laughs> nice. But yeah, uh, we could maybe switch over to the teams and see who's going to be playing for this round two. But before we go on to the people, we've got ourselves our round two maps. Starting us off is going to be Brainmaker on Black Belly Skate Park. A very interesting map. It's very straightforward. It is. But hey, look, there's people. I can't so, believe it. The people that we have here is on taking nap is Punk, Neo Skep, Bedillions, but I, we can call him Skep and Akalin. And on quickly doodles, we see Juice Knox, Octobaget, Malak, and 57747. Why don't you take uh, info about taking naps a little bit? Butters. Well, I don't taking naps. I haven't really seen them play, though. I am a slight bit biased due to knowing, well, a few people on there, mainly Anakin, who is a very interesting backline slash midline player. They play a lot of interesting weapons that can range from their squeezer to their K Pro to even their remix. And for the rest of taking naps, we see Punk from. I have quite a fan card, the junior main, it's the Neo from Kappa, really good Octobus player, and Skep Adillions, I think is a shooter player who plays k -Shot. And for the side quickly, Doodles, Juice Knox is from Up the Ante, that recently disbanded, so uh, anyone who wants to uh, pick up Juice Knox is a really good support player. Uh, Arte Bacon and Malik is new people on the scene, if I'm thinking correctly. And 57747 from Prism, but it's still a lot to play because uh, reasons that they are still good in level as well. But they will be playing most likely Clash in the match. As a, just as a quick reminder, though, for everyone still watching, if you're not already in the lo the midway, uh, sorry, Millerway Institute of <laughs> Turfing, sorry, I got that wrong. Uh, you can use exclamation discord to get the link to the discord. We also have an active Twitter at, at Milloway IT. And it's a great way to find new people and have great matches with random people. And hopefully I, hopefully there should be, if you do exclamation my bracket, you'll see the bracket. But yeah, uh, now let's talk about the map. <laughs> we didn't make it on black Bear, like you said before. Going on to Rainmaker on Black Billy, it's a very interesting map with three main ways of pushing in. You got the, you've got your, well, you got your half pipe, which is also known as the terrible way to push by most people in the community. Uh, you got your straight away through your jump. You got straight away through jump uh, mid side, which is a very interesting push. Never, not really seen very often. And you got the most common, which is going through window on the far side opposite of half pipe. Yeah, so going straight forward is basically the hit and miss, and going through the window is the most usual way because it's basically giving a little bit of delay, but also giving them what they need to feed to you. But on half life, that's the risk reward. It, it's basically if you want, if you have a lot of pain, you can go for that, but you have to log away. And as we see right now, taking out is actually going to go through half life. <laughs> Speaking of it. A very quick and opening ray from that C gen. As we've been seeing compromise for taking naps, we're gonna be seeing a double armor idea right here. And for frankly doodles, we're gonna be seeing a very heavy paint based around getting that C gen in position and getting the rays off as soon as they can. Crinkly Doodles is gonna be going three down right now, is taking naps, is taking that rainmaker through half pipe and looking to get even more further in and taking push. The 52 go down and quickly doodles. Ray is gonna be coming out the oh. taking naps rainmaker is gonna be slightly missing that long. On the side right there, as the K-Pro, as the C-Jet's gonna be out of position, taken out by that K-Pro, who is holding their position very perfectly right here, trying to be, gonna be contested by that tri slot and is gonna be jumping out right now. The 
K-Shot right here is going to be missling as they are going to be trying to push up with those missiles and get that Rainmaker into a better position than it currently is. And also remember to, for everyone, Rainmaker is not based on the actual position of the Rainmaker, it's based on distance. So what Neo did was actually ride the, ride the barrier to make it all the way closer to the Rainmaker barrier, to the pedestal, to make it to 20. So that was a good play that Neo did, so the Quickling Duos will need to take a lot of time to go through in the middle. But as we see right now, they have a 3 down advantage, so they can just move really through the window and get those thing ready so they can push forward. But it looks like the it looks like the jam might be overextended right now. As we're gonna be seeing the C jet right here trying to get the ray up, gonna be sitting next to that rainmaker, which is gonna be a very dangerous spot for the be They are gonna be getting armor right here. The ray is gonna be coming out. They are gonna be going down to the K Pro who's flanking them, taking the rainmaker out with them as they keep on going. Gonna be fighting that tri slosh right there. Gonna be taking them out, going for that 4K right now as they are popping off. This is what we love to see, folks, is it's gonna be trying to contest that Rainmaker shield right now, as they are narrowly gonna avoid blowing up there. That was a crucial sneak that Aikland did to actually save the lead right now. But as you see, that taking up having three specials, they, again, they can take the left route. But as you see, the CJ taking out Stingley a little bit too early, but taking out the try, but tra back and trading it off with the K Pro and killing the. I think that is killing the trash Sludger, but getting killed by the K Shot. And it looks like Crinkly do his would be able to get the Rainmaker unless they have enough paint though, but two down on the side and taking naps would help them a lot. As we're going to be seeing Crinkly Doodles using their missiles that you're going to use to try and push up this K-Shot is going to be going for that tri slosh taking them out. Missiles are going to be forced upon them as they notice the, the K-Pro right here, though they are going to be going down, leaving only the Rainmaker left. K-Pro going in for it, taking them out, as that is going to be a wipe on the side of Crinkly Doodles as Taking Naps is getting themselves in great position right here as the K-Pro takes the Rainmaker in there, getting themselves in position, getting special, and getting ready to push into that mid right there. Taking Naps is going to take Shrive so you get the Rainmaker into a neutral position or just enough is to the base by pressure because they don't want Crinkly Doodles just to sneak up on them like the Island did to them. But we see Neo just popping off on the side of half by Creating a path for the Waymaker, um, uh, most likely making a distraction from quickly duels, so they won't focus on the Waymaker that's going through window right now, being supported by the team, but the armor as well. Um, this might be just a stalemate for the side of taking naps. The tri slash narrowly avoiding death and then going directly into that three. That's going to be a wipe on the side of taking naps as this tri slash is going to be pushing directly into their base and trying to paint as much as they can to get that armor up and get the positional advantage. The other tri slash on taking nap is going to be trying to find them. Going to be going down though as the tri slash is going to be taking two down. Rainmaker will be going down though to a well placed bomb. We are bombs coming out on the side of the I mean, doodles as we're going to be seeing them on going in. Going to be going three down though, as that is going to be a near wipe. The Rainmaker is going to be popped by taking naps, as they are going to be trying to push into mid right here, using their specials, grabbing anything they can. They have two armors ready right now. 38 seconds is left on that clock. Quickly, Doodles is getting desperate. Something needs to happen for them. 37 to 20 points right now. That and that reads that definitely would be a little bit of a penalty on the side of Quickly Doodles. What they need right now is to wipe. Taking naps twice, most likely wipe the both armors, so they would have basically no defense on the side. But the boot come out, but Neo not can kill from there. And right now, it just basically quickly do is need to wait it out and find a mistake on the side to take naps so they can push up freely. But everyone going straight forward. Quickly do is need to pick up the win because now almost that's it. We're seeing the overtime being inactive, Ray being coming out on Quickly Doodles as they are desperately making their final course right here. Taking Naps is getting themselves in position to hold a great defense. Tri-Slosh is going to be going down, and that is going to be Rainmaker down. First point goes to Taking Naps. The pick and troll, though, talking about it, was actually going to go to Taking Naps anyway. Taking well, Naps was that K-Pro really getting extremely aggressive, as you can see with their 12KA right now really aggressive with their flanks and allowing the rest of their team to push up and pin through them perfectly. Also, uh, Quick Blue had 9 missiles, but actually trade off, taking that had let's say seven, eight, nine, 10 armors actually. So for special coordination as well, taking that has been doing that perfectly. So that helped them take the point. But as much as they wanted to go distance, they weren't really able to because of the fights that they were able to take. 
against quickly duels, we can say that quickly duels, duels can be the really aggressive team, but really for taking naps, Neo and Scap and Park and I definitely Akalin, they're both being the aggressive players that will that they will need to basically Definitely. Well, coming up, they, okay. Coming up next, we're gonna have Tower Control on Skipper Pavilion. A very interesting map. How do you feel about this? Why is this in the pool? Fair enough. It's gonna be very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> it's gonna be very interesting to see if T uh, Crinkly Doodles decides to pull out that C Jet again and go for that Ray Spam, which might work in their favor for this, as it kind of is a straight line down. Okay, so as we so as we got from our streamer, I'll launch my boy for this maps recently. This is your fault. Is it, why? <laughs> okay, you guys are questionable on decisions because on on this the tower, no one plays this map on tower control. So if I remember correctly, but I think it's from the mid and it's going all the way to the way mid pedestal position. Well, anyways, no. as we're going to be seeing a very interesting switch from the K -Pro, the K Pro here, they're going to be taking out that the Penza, the well, crap it. Let's see if it's going to be living up to the name or if it's going to be placed positionally perfect. As they are going to be going down at the start of the team fight now, Team Crinkly Doodles is getting themselves the armor and positional advantage, forcing the rest of taking naps to back off to allow them to try and take that first checkpoint as they do reach them. And now missiles are coming out from taking naps, going to be taking them off the tower, but not long enough for that tower to be sent backwards as they are past the first checkpoint as they are going in. And actually, this is a surprising thing because this is on Skipper Pavilion. This is a small map, so this could be definitely a snow folly map, as we see. Might not two down on the side each of each team, and basically, it's whoever can get control of mid and get to sneak. Most likely, looking at the both shooters on the side of quickly duels and the try on the side of taking naps. Whoever can basically take control of who's fights to win takes the lead. But for the K Vapi, it's a questionable pick. They honestly should have been maybe with something like this rapid with the custom blaster, so they have an inkjet advantage. But if they're going for baller to just keep on the keep on the keep on the tower itself, it is a questionable play. But good play, even The Caprit here is positioning themselves in a really good spot though, which is allowing them to not only get off their get off their normal weapon, but also their torpedoes, which is definitely why they were going for it instead of the baller. Ballers keep just kind of a benefit on that more than anything. As we're going to be seeing the rest of Quickly Doodles trying to push in the mid right here. Armor is going to be coming out on the side of taking nap. As we're going to see this remix right here pushing up extremely aggressively. Going to be finding the pick, but going down to the missiles as the rest of taking naps is getting themselves in position to take that right, to take that tower and just push it into their base and hopefully take lead off of them. Follow me, mates. Let's go. But otherwise, on. But otherwise, taking up again is trying to be aggressive and take the tower to the second checkpoint. That will be beating by quickly do it to actually stop the push. Again, no one gets control in middle because this is just a small map. It, this has been like 90% fighting for the middle control. We need to see a fight from either team for them to get a great push on, but two down on the side of quickly rules, but still control in mid. There's no difference that we have right now. As we're going to be seeing the rest of the Doodles being forced backwards by that Crapid, which is why Crapid is such an interesting weapon and good for the scenario, as it just allows them to hold positions and keep people from moving forward, or with less they die to the Crapid. And look at that Crapid getting a double right there. So that's, and they're actually getting to the checkpoint right now, and so close to getting a triple, but actually getting cleaned off by Hawk. And they actually beat the second check right now, so we see that taking up is in a lead once again. And taking maybe the second point now, because this is a really good snow snowball. And with the booyah. Oh, that's three down. As we're gonna be seeing three down on the side of taking naps is just the crappin. If anyone's to remain, honestly, the crappin is the best for holding back the rest of the team. Crappin is gonna be hopping the mid right now, and it's gonna be forced a bit back back to their base as the rest of the team. Crinkly Doodles are getting themselves in position to try and push under into their base. Though they are, the remix is going to be going down to that Crapid right now, who is going to be going into Baller in the mid and going to be directing, getting that double direct right there. 
taking out that ends up allowing them to push forward into their base. With the push forward to the base and the aggressor to come that we always saw for the last five minutes and the missiles coming out, they could definitely do more push, but right now, they just want to do assembly for the last minute. They want to keep control of mid, or else they'll basically do the same thing that they did to quickly do it, making it down to the third checkpoint. As quickly Doodles is going to be taking out that K shot, they are going to be going down to that Sachin bomb right now. Booyah bomb is coming out. They are in full desperation mode right now as time is taking away. One of their ends up goes down on the tower. Fourth here. Remix is also going to be going down to the tri slots behind them with 30 seconds left on that clock. Quickly Doodles is definitely feeling the pressure right now as they are being or pushing themselves into mid with relentless force here. Again, this is the last resort they can do. They're just panicking on the push ahead. But as we see that Neo stopping the push on the cave on the cave after to push ahead. Or no, wait, that's a shot. And, but everyone else in the middle just basically has no control because Neo, the Trice are just having a whole advantage with their team as well. With the ends up putting up armor, the missiles coming out soon, and the cave up just pinching the tower. That would be it. And Technats would be taking the victory. Taking naps is going to be going 2 0 against Crickly Doodle. We are going to be going in for a final map, which is Splat Zones on Maple Heart. Going to be very interesting to see the comp pull out here as a lot of Crinkly, uh, taking naps doesn't really need to change as they already have immensely good painting power and ability to stop them from taking, ta uh, stop Crinkly Doodles from taking flanks and taking flanks himself. And it's going to be very interesting to see if Crinkly Doodle switches up their comp at all to ch to sit suit the map. Five seven seven. We need to see a clash buster now. This is where it shines. And Nox, we might need to see you go back on trial slasher to maybe counter off on Neo, but mostly we might need a lot of bombs on the side of Flickling Duos just to cap zone. But for taking naps, like you said, they do have fine pain power, and again, the Slayers on the side of taking naps just doing the job perfectly to push out quickly Duels and capitalizing them in the base. But again, tower control on Scraper Pavilion is basically a battle in mid. So Basically, in that, going to the ice play of flat zones, which is a stalemate mode, this might be pushing over two taking naps, unless we do see the comp change. Definitely, speak. As it's it's going to be very interesting to see how they play around the flanks and the usage of the top of the perches on the left and right on both sides to be extremely aggressive or take advantage of not allowing them to push into bases. Hold up, that, that's a bamboo on the side. We're of, a oh bamboo my God. coming out on the side of Crinkly Doodles with a very interesting comp, pulling out the Tri Nouveau, going with the bomb strategy along with the raid. And we're going to be seeing the rest of the taking the nap getting themselves using the a rapid again along with a bob lobber very interesting pick on this map again taking up has a lot of pain that quickly duels wouldn't be able to fight against but on the side of quickly duels they do have a missile spam potential but going up with a zap instead of a, a going with a zap instead of a junior on this they won't have enough pain either they just have a lot of manpower to fight against on the zone. But we see right now that Take Naps have full control of the zone, even though Quickly Duel did do a little bit of capping, with a little bit of penalty inside of Take Naps. The, the ends up definitely subscribes to the philosophy that they can't paint if they're dead, which is definitely what they're trying to do right here. The armor is going to be coming out on the side of Quickly Duel's map. He's going to be trying to use that to switch the zone, which they are, as the penalty is going to be taken away. They are going to be switching the zone almost as soon as the penalty is gone. Not about Quickly Doodles to take any points off of this. The K Rapid is gonna be forced into a close quarters combat right here. He's gonna be losing that fight as we're gonna be seeing the rest of Quickly Doodles trying to take zone, though, as the rest of the team taking naps is gonna be stopping them very heavily. He's gonna be taking out that taking out their backline as they are gonna be trying to push in even further and harder as the K Rapid is gonna be taking out their tricep. But the but Jude's on the tricep and Newpo actually trading up both sloshers on the side of Take Naps, which 
has to take the advantage for Kun do to take his own once again because of the delay of the paint by both slashes to capture zone so easily. But the cave after going down again, turning off with the K shot. So they won't have enough aggressive power. But we see that 577 Kelly with the bamboo and single tapping. But the zone cap will be going off to take a nap, all because of the time delay. And also because of the rain as well. I think we'll be seeing the bamboo going for the missiles right here. Gonna be using that to hopefully force up into the, the zone. Gonna be capping it with that as we're gonna be seeing the penalty on them taking away as they are gone as Googly Doodles is done with playing their passive comp and just going full in, full force. They definitely subscribe to the ideology that they can't paint if they are dead. And but they are doing this to a T as they are switching the zone to the lead back on over to themselves as Taken Naps is trying to take zone right here. Keeps on going for it and they are going to be taking zone with a slight penalty on them. They try and definitely take that lead. But they give Quickly Duels a penalty of 28 from the lead of 52. But for right now, Taken Naps has a penalty that actually has been killed now. But we're going to see them take the lead. And because of the missile spam on the side of Quickly Duels, they might be able to be captured zone, but it's going for but the was that the bamboo going down to the to the blob? And actually the K shot killing two more with the missiles that they had. And that will give Quickly Duels the way of the zone. And he turns off the penalty for sure. As we're gonna be seeing the K shot here using the missiles, using that to allow their team to push up, trying to get extremely aggressive as they did a little bit ago. As the rest of the team taking naps, is taking angles from all different spots, trying to get that zone. Armor is gonna be taken off by them as one as the end zap is gonna be going down to rain. The tri slots will also be going down to the K Rapid. As Baller is gonna be going into mid. Testing the zone at least, bringing it halfway, still taking out the bamboo as they are trying to paint over it. The rest of the team coming off the spawn as the zone will be flipped back to Crinkly Doodle with time, no time left on the clock. That's going to be a wipe on the side of taking now as time is just taking away and I don't believe they have any time to switch zone as that's going to be a KO. Picking do just moving to the zone and actually winning the first point, but it doesn't really matter. It's playoff three, so this was only meant for tiebreakers. But taking up taking a set, but to quickly do a kind of point off is still just easy to them. They they got point off with a bamboo, and the missile spam they got was fourteen. Oh my gosh, the missile in this this meta is so crucial. What amazing matches as always. Both teams putting up amazing efforts but team taking naps just gonna be well taking a nap all over them and not nah, this they, match they've been taking shots they're not taking naps they're giving they're making taking no they they've made controls go to sleep winning the set that's what you mean as we'll be back very shortly for our next match stay tuned don't forget that we will still be here we're not leaving you
Welcome back, everyone, to the, well, eighth launch point draft cup. We're going on to round three of our groupings to decide your placement. The judgment day has come. So, yeah. Oh. Uh, the team names are actually Priority Subs, which is going to be taking a, a Beast, Tracy, Jazzicorn, Orion, which is the Queen name on that team, and Sprout on the side of uh, five on white, we're going to have Spot Squid, Elite Wumi, Illusion, and Rod 707. To say the least, if I don't see people on the right, I'm gonna be a I'm gonna be a bit upset for team five on the right. But that's neither here or there. It just might be a, a bit of a, a talking point. And also for the weapons itself, most likely from Jazz Queen, we're going to see all juniors descend and from Squids, if it's who I'm thinking of, we're going to see an all blob on the set as well. It's going to be very interesting to see how these guys match up, especially since we're going to be going into the Clan Blitz on Piranha Pit. A very interesting map with it straight away and the conveyors allowing you to take very interesting and higher up positions to maybe try and get a few cheeky picks off with a uh, medium range to long range weapon. But like I said about the blob, it's going to have a vein here going from the conveyors because the height advantages that you can get from just throwing the bubbles, you will have a lot of pain going straight to the basket. But with the junior doing the double bomb tactic, we'll have a lot of turf either way. But it's mostly going to be based off the slayers and see how they handle against each other. Because we're mostly going to see that if they can't handle one another, everything will just be in the middle. But this is a clan blitz. Slayer kills does matter, but putting the claim in the basket matters even more. Remember that. Well, as we get ourselves on to the match, we'll be... Seeing a cool launch screen. 
<laughs> to full loading screen is going to be seeing very interesting overview of the map. As we're going to be seeing our weapons here, very interesting pick on the squeezer. As we're going to be seeing a bamboo squeezer, bob lobber, and enzap on the side of five on the right, and we're going to be seeing the foil flingza, the C jet, the squish matic and the splatter shot junior on the side of Priority Subs. The Foil Splingza is going to be going down on the side of Priority Subs, along with the Splash Omatic. The Armory is going to be coming out on 5 on right as they're pushing into their base and getting that C-Jet out of position right here. Missiles are going to be coming out just even further backing up that Junior. Going to be taken out by that end zap as they are being forced to jump out right here. The Zap actually came in in like super quick trying to kill off the junior first because she was trying to, uh, she was trying to get quick armor but I see right now that 5 on right is getting priority access of middle and also uh, that's not a C jet that's a V jet so they're going for double missile spam with the flame jet doing the missiles first and actually this the missile from side priority stuff that's actually getting kill which would give them advantage to push in if they only have a clam. We're seeing the bubbles coming out from that or the uh, squeezer, we're gonna be seeing them not being able to take much advantage of that. We will see the basket being popped though by five on right as we see them just scrambling to get themselves clams. Missile is gonna be coming out against priority subs. The Flingza is taking out that Bob Lobber and doing an amazing job holding down this courtyard right here as they are going for that kill right there as they are trying to take up the other team's conveyor so that they can't hop down on from the left side. And on the side of Five and White, Flashgate had did have an extra clam, so they could have gave up more time because one of the other team members had a nine clams ready, but since he was fucking on the kill, mostly the clam push ended. But as you see right now, two is down on the side of priority subs again. And they do have another clam ready, so they're just waiting on the special coordination of the army that comes out immediately right now in the bubble push right now as well. They should be able to go for another push. We just seen the bubble right here being used as a shield though unfortunately a bomb is going to be a well placed bomb is going to be just taking them out of that that's going to be a full wipe on the five of uh, five on right as priority subs is getting themselves specials up and taking well priority over their entirety of mid and almost the under basket on five on right we're going to be seeing the bomb rush coming out here from that splash nomadic allowing them to get into better positions right here and try and get under their basket as they are taking the railing right here. It's gonna be noticed by that bamboo right here as they are gonna be pushing up, gonna be contested a slight bit and will go down to the bamboo as the rest of the team is forced to back up. Five and White is mostly just playing the aggression side here while Fourier is just playing the waiting and patient side of the game because we saw both in this whole game that Five and White had done two puts so far, and for Fire Reset, they really had no puts at all, but they had so much pain. They were just trying to battle out the ends up and the battle out the squeezer. They have plenty more patches on there, with the squeezer actually having the bubbles ready and going for another, another pop right there again. But after getting killed, or no, they don't put it in. As we're gonna be seeing Team Fire on the right popping that basket, keeping the aggression up taking advantage of the mishaps of priority sub. The Flinger Roller is going to be taking that trade with that bamboo as the rest of five on the right is getting themselves ready for another push. That basket just now closed. A penalty of 25, with very few points remaining on their side. The game is anyone's right now, but mostly goes towards five on the right. Priority subs right now is so backed up in the point in their base. They have a land ready, but they're getting a kill on the block, which is going Give them some pain advantage right now, and now we see that priority subs that's getting the advantage and going in for a push. But again, the blobs coming in return, and the squeezer and the zap actually playing so much better. And the bamboo bring up another missile, it's going to make a lot of push, bad push today, and a trade from the flings up and a kill on the junior. They'll have no armor and another missile down. So, once again, five on right having the priority of the mid and be able to put another push with the clam in hand. As we're going to be seeing Team Priority subs trying to find any amount of footing to get into well, mid and even under the basket. With 30 seconds left on the clock, you can see the desperation going as we're just going to see 5 on right right here. Holding positions and just sitting back 
and letting the rest of their team do their less well wedding priority subs push into them because they know for a fact they don't have to push at all as 12 seconds is left on that clock they're just trying to go in and maybe even score that super right there one of them is going down make that two as we will be seeing the super plan being made on priority sub side Baller will be going out, unfortunately not going to be finding anyone, as overtime has now been enacted. Ball is on the conveyor belt, the Flinger Roller is going to be going down, the Sploosh is going to be going down, it's own as Ball will be going in, the Junior will be going down, and that's going to be a wipe on the side of Priority Subs, the game is over. Point goes to 5 on the right, played an amazing game right there. Priority Subs, they didn't really have any chance to move, they are playing so defensive, that literally they let five on right go to the base and let them have so many points. Priority subs just beating to them and panic all because they didn't really have enough range. They were waiting for them to come gum to five on right. They were really playing too much defensive. They need to find a way to be more aggressive, like five on right, so they can be able to push up and get to the objective that they want to do. But that's only for clan bits. Right now it's Rainbow Maker Next, which is another aggressive mode. But it's on Starfish, so they, they can have a lot of chokes. Definitely, because with Ra well, Rainmaker Starfish is a very interesting because of the fact if they get that early wipe, there's a high chance that they can almost instantly KO right here. Especially as we might see a hammer coming out, that might be the play right here. Again, for Rainmaker on starfish the choke point is at 30 points because you have to go through the stage and you have to go up the ramp which everyone hates because you can immediately get killed by anything from a bomb or even from some shots being triple teamed you would need to have a lot of a lot of wipes or even two down on the side of the team to even get that ko definitely it's gonna be very interesting to see how with how both teams come at this problem the problem Definitely would be on the side of priority subs though, because like we like we said before, they're playing so much defensive and for five on right, they have so much paint and they have so much aggression on the side that they would be able to just cap the Waymaker up to that point and just stay there. Maybe even camp priority subs at that point. It's gonna be very interesting to see what ha happens as we're gonna be going on to the map right now gonna be seeing a nice overhead view of it many people have seen this before as we're gonna be seeing weapons coming out right now very interesting pick on the dynamo and the brush k pro is coming out as we will be seeing the bob lover stay along with the bamboo switching to a squiffer very interesting idea to come with this as we're gonna be seeing as we're gonna be seeing them push directly into mid and trying to get their specials up and get that rainmaker the competent side of priority sub is sure interesting, but we're taking advantage on the side of, of five on white's comp. Not really. It, the competent side of priority subs will have them a little bit of delay because of the dynamo doing the booyah spam. And honestly, they should have went for a cape on there, but the brush taking death, and same with the junior taking that. So no armor and no sneaks on side of the brush as well. But as we see on five on white just taking it down to 40, 30 now, they would be able to go on to 20. Sneaking past that brush right there, very fortunate for them and very unfortunate for Priority Subs as it's already a 19 push, which is a hard take back to do. As we're going to be seeing the brush here trying to find that pick on that blob lobber right there, going to be finding it. The Squiffer is going to be trying to take them out right here as we're going to be seeing the Inkjet coming out. The Squiffer hitting an amazing shot right there, taking out the Inkjet and forcing the rest of Priority Subs to get their specials ready to make that for us. The blob in the the blob and the bus training each other for kills was crucial because the because the bus was being the slayer and the blob is being the paint method for the side of 5 on white. But as we see right now, again the stamina in the middle, but we do see 5 on white having three specials on the rise and the diamond going down on the side of priority subs will give them another chance to push. But again, three minutes left, who would be the one to push? Most likely the zap, but the zap is dead, so most likely it's going to be a stamina once again. As we're going to be seeing the armor and the inkjet coming out there, not going to be finding any room, putting a immense amount of pressure and forcing the other team into using their armor. The K-Shot right there is going to be finding themselves the other K-Shot. 
I mean, the K-Pro, as they are going to be pushing, getting taken down by the Swiffer, as the rest of the team priority sub is using their base as a way to get their special and push back into mid. Rainmaker right here is going to be resetting, allowing priority uh, 5 on right to maybe pump that Rainmaker and get another push. Up. With the NJ and the armor cone, that definitely would be a good push that we see right now, but the down of the K-Shell would not really help them have a push advantage. But, and we see right now that Jasper is actually backing up, and the bots are being dead, again, they don't have any chance to push. And we see immediately, they got cost in 5 of my taking the mid, and take the Rainmaker to their own. As we're going to be seeing, the Dynamo here looking to try and get a pick, or go, and then go for that Booyah bomb right after. They get a bit aggressive, taking out that end zap though, with that Rainmaker goes down on the side of priority, I mean, on the side of 5 on the right. Is that's gonna be a wipe on the side of five on the right? Priority subs need to start moving now. Dynamo is gonna be picking up that Rainmaker as the rest of five on the right is gonna be coming off a spot right now as they're gonna be trying to set up to get that positional advantage and get specials ready and take that Rainmaker out. With the Rainmaker coming up, a one down on the side of priority subs. Again, what they want to do right now is paint, and that's what they were trying to do, but. Again, winning it with the one percent they got costed for with five on right. Again, killing the Waymaker and two down on the side. A priority so we're seeing this over and over again. That five on right just basically having the aggro advantage while priority sub again is being too defensive that they just need to wait for an opening. As you can see, as the ball wobber now is going for their special to paint out their platform and get that Rainmaker popped, we're gonna be seeing them take out that brush right here as they're going for the bunker flank as the rest of Team Priority Sub is looking to get those picks right now. The brush, the Bob Lab are getting extremely aggressive right here as they are gonna be take, oh, taking out that K shot right there as the rest of the Priority Subs is trying to push up against that Bob Lab. The Blob needs to be the, be aggressive. He needs to be a nuisance just to have enough pain for the side of 5 of White. Because that's what causing Priority Sub to fall back. They're taking the advantage off because they can't really touch at all. As you see, with 42 seconds remaining, the ends up trying to battle the K shot that actually does get the kill, but two down inside of 5 of White, but two down on the side of Priority Subs as well. This will mostly be another 5 of White victory. As we see 30 seconds left on that clock, Priority Subs is looking to get picks and get into positional, better positions than they currently are. It's seeing the square for the brush is going to be trying to bomb them out. The Bob Blob are doing exactly what they need to do in getting that mid contested, putting the paint on that ground bomb. He's going to be taking out that brush on the side of Priority Subs, which is immensely good pick for 5 on right. With 8 seconds set left on that clock, Priority Subs needs to take that Rainmaker in. Make an amazing push. Overtime has been enacted. If Rainmaker does go down, that will be the end of this game. As the as the Dynamo is using their Bo Booyah Bomb, but it is not going to be enough. The second match goes to 5 on right. Sadly for the GG Booyah, again, Priority Subs just waited too long. They're just waiting for the opening too much for them to get even a lead or even a step inside 5 on right space. And also to come with favorite crush promote, but still 10 hours from the side of Jazzicorn. That's good for them. But for 5 and right, again, they have this more aggressive composition that you can't even fight priorities. So they can't really fight it when you're priority subs, doing these awkward comps really, and being the defensive team. So they need to be, again, they need to be a lot more aggressive or change their weapons to be a lot more aggressive in the mode. Definitely. As we're going to be going on to our final map of to map of our group section, we're going to be going on to Tower Control, Humpback, Pump Track. A very interesting map, and honestly, a very interesting mode on this map too. Again, why is this in pool? It's questionable. The tower is too tall, which is super weird, and it goes over the hill. If you are a slot player, you will have a joy right here. Definitely would see a select machine that that would be pretty cool. But we're definitely going to see spots here have a wide on here, having so much leverage to paint the whole map. But on the side of uh, but the rest of the team, I, they're fine. They they have a they have support of the paint, so they can just form free. But outside of priority subs, I feel that they might switch 
they might actually need to switch to a slosher, maybe go for a double armor comp. Like going with Jasper is, is Junior to counter five on white. Definitely. It's gonna be very interesting to see if priority subs decide to keep with that dynamo or if they switch off of it. Dynamo is a very interesting weapon, especially on this map with Rainmaker. I mean on tower control. Thinking ahead. Yeah, a Rainmaker is the usual mod on this map, that that's the reason why you say it. But that's fine. But Humpback is a questionable map anyways. As both teams are very have very good kits dedicated to this we're gonna be seeing if they decide to use them going on we're gonna be seeing the dino two dynamos coming out very interesting idea along with the k jr it seems that priority subs have gone full all out for heavy weapons right now so using trying to use all of their advantage to try and get insta pop on every single weapon right here as they are going to be getting that armor and pushing into mid I'm not really gonna say it, but the double dynamo is a questionable comp, but the double armor is actually what they might want to need it to take a leap. But again, we see at the sort of 5 on weight, it's taking the aggressive side, and actually Blackbeard is not doing a block, but doing tri at the time to be more upfront by the new paint. And we do see the cape program and the CJ coming out from the side of 5 on weight, so they are doing double armor comp. As we see right now, they beat the first checkpoint, they're going to the second checkpoint now. The diamond's going down and the junior going down again. Well, it's a cake junior. As we're going to be seeing the tower rider going down to the bomb as most of prior or of five on right are down as priority subs is getting themselves into good positions in mid with very with two minutes, I mean three minutes left on that clock. We're going to be seeing them trying to push in right here. Yes. Enzap's gonna be finding that very crucial pick right there, allowing them to go in with an armor at the ready. They are gonna be using it as soon as this, or as soon as the dynamo drops from their booyah. The armor does come out right now as they are pushing second checkpoint. Bubbles do come out from that junior. Gonna be distracting most of the five on right from being able to push and allowing them to take the first checkpoint. It's really good that the that the zap engine was getting on and off the tower just to kill the checkpoint. That's a really good move that they did right there. And the boot coming out from the K Pro, it just giving them for mid. And the push control on the side of five on white. It's actually being diminished on the side of priority subs. Doing a double diamond comp actually might work out to their favor right now because they have so much pain on the hill. As we've seen the armor coming out on priority subs, what is gonna allow this dynamo roller to try and push up in the mid? They are gonna be taking tower right now, using their their ability and heavy weaponry to fling over that those pumps right there to try and find picks to go down on the side of priority subs. This is a really bad thing for them as the rest of the team is gonna be trying to jump in. The di the gold dynamo is gonna be going down. The K Junior is gonna be trying to fight that tri slosh and is gonna be successful in that as they're getting themselves ready to get another bubbles off on today. Again, two downs on the side of priority sub just now and everyone has gotten five on right. We do see the five on right is getting the advantage to go to the second checkpoint, but two down but getting killed by the missile of the K shot, they would be able to secure the second checkpoint with the Booyah just tapping to their favor as well. As we're gonna be seeing the armor coming out on five on right, they're just pushing Bass second checkpoint right now. Dynam the gold dynamo is gonna be going down as the end zap is fighting the K shot right now. Along with the Trislosh being there, gonna be going. Trislosh is gonna be going down to that Dynamo right there. As the missiles are gonna be coming out for that, from that K shot, they're getting on tower, pushing it all the way to seven. As Booyah Bomb took them out with a minute and 59 seconds left on that clock. Priority subs is definitely in a good position to make a push, but that push needs to be amazing. The deny of the Booyah gave them some time actually because they might have won that in the first place because five and white might. Because they know in front of the last two games that Priority Subs is in a panic mode now because they need to go to all the checkpoints and basically KO this at this point to even take the lead. But with this, but with the weapons right now, Five and White knows that they can just slay them as much as possible. Definitely, as we're gonna be seeing the armor coming out from Priority Subs right here, they are be using this to take the tower. Trislosh is gonna be taken down right there as they have another Booyah bomb ready push in with that. Power is going to be contested as they're just going to keep throwing Toxic Mist all over it to stop them from being able to recover ink and decreasing their movement speed. With a minute left on that clock, Priority Squids is definitely feeling 
the pressure right now. Nice job in saying priority squids, but also as well, we do. Uh, but basically, uh, as you see right now, with the toxic mist, that's so crucial in this mode and on this map as well. That's what's stopping priority sub to pass even that their, their checkpoint because they're immediately going to get double team. But with the double timer coming out, with the armor coming out already, the booyah coming out now, they yes, priority subs need to do a push, but they need to get a kill to even go ahead. We've seen priority subs taking the tower right now. We're gonna be seeing the diamond was trying to shoot into the mid. Bob, the junior is gonna be taking out that tri slot, which is gonna be allowing them to push into mid. The booyah bomb is gonna be coming out. It's gonna be held there, taking out the, the K shot on the side. As we're gonna be seeing both dynamos gonna be going down to that suction bomb, as that's gonna be one left on the side of priority subs and five on the right. It's gonna sweep the match. The nail in the coffin, basically. As that is gonna be the 3 0 from five on the right. Priority subs putting up an outstanding fight, but that fight was just not good enough. The, the, the fight was just too defensive. It's basically just like priority subs with the castle and five away was the like the uh voyagers, I guess you can say it like something like that. It's battling on the castle and they just took down the entrance. There's not really much to Well, there was a lot that they could have done, but priority subs did it I mean five on the right just did it better. Yeah. That that's really all we can say. Their composition but, was a little bit messy, but they played it out, and they did their best. They did. They didn't give up at any point and held out to the very end. But, to everyone around, that's going to be the end of our group stage. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'm, me too. <laughs> well, I meant, I was more talking directly to you, but I guess that also works. But, yeah, we'll be back very soon. Well, soon-ish. Don't go anywhere. We've got ourselves the brackets. Yep. Give us like 15 minutes, but either well, way, I, stay but... tuned or <laughs> else I'll be screwed. Uh, you want to do your plugs now? Oh yeah, true. Since actually Butter will still be here, so you better stay because Butter is cool. He is funny. He is a good commentator. But for me, I am actually Joanne 51 on Twitter if you want to follow me there. But yeah, stay, stay, stay fun with Butter, Butters and you nice them. Anyways, we'll be catching you guys very soon.
Hello and welcome to Launch Point Draft Cup number eight. I'm Cork and I'm joined here by Butters. Well, I'm, I'm back again. How's everyone doing? The grind never stops. Neither does commentate. Maybe the grind should stop because breaks are good. But either way, we're going into Top Cut and we're going to be starting with Toe Steppers versus Staff's Fan Club. Well, to say the least, both of these names are really great names. Toe Steppers. I'm gonna actually take. I'm actually gonna say that I came up with this name. Uh, I was talking to one of the people on this, and I what we just what uh, we're talking about how people keep stepping on each other's toes when they keep moving together. And then I told him you need to make that a team name, and that's how we got here. That's Fen Club. Well, you gotta appreciate the staff. Yeah. And to start off this tournament or this top cut, we're gonna be going to probably one of the more vanilla. Modes in the entirety of Splatoon, Splat Zones, Make a Mark. Very, it's a very nice round, rounded out map. Unless very, you play Tri Slosher. Well, if you play Tri Slosher, it's a, it's, it's practically a playground. Playground. I can't say play. Playground for you. Yeah, for sure. It's it does work well for anchors and longer range weapons because of the sight lines. But if you happen to be someone playing a Russian weapon like a Tri, Carbon, etc., it's a really nice map to just hide in a wall or a ledge and then jump out swinging your roller of death and squish someone. Yes, I think we'll see a bit of that, because I believe Tax Fraud is like a Tri main you mentioned earlier, or... He's an I've overall pocket many... player. Nice. I've seen people in Solo that always play Brush that are named Tax Fraud, but I don't think it's the same person. It is Other not. Other than that, I think... The rest of Toe Steppers is going to have good weapons to work around that because Ty is generally like kind of a meta paint sl painting slayer player. Shads is going to play backline. I believe Blue plays Squeezer. So they will have weapons that allow them to control space and enable the rush down weapons to get a lot of picks. Definitely. It's going to be very interesting to see how they use that to their advantage and if they will be using it. Coming up right now, we're gonna be seeing this tri slash coming out from Tax Fraud, as we also will be seeing the dually, the well, Galuga duallys coming out on the side of Ta Staff's fan club. It's actually gonna be a double baller comp. What was Froppy playing that 
V52, which while K52 is usually the one used and is very survivable, V52 is almost as survivable because of... Mostly just because of Baller, because you have a free escape and you can actually move with it unlike a Booyah Bomb, and it's more defensive than the wall. And start off, we've got Toe Steppers taking first cap, getting a nice near wipe, and painting up a lot into their enemy's base. Getting another pick after that with that ink jet, and they're looking like they just want to end this. Definitely, as we're going to be seeing them just really holding down that zone, that their base right now with the 52 Galugas, they're just holding that right now, getting their baller and specials ready, just so that in the off chance that they do put that toe steppers do push in, they will have a way to either escape or push even further in. The bubbles are going to be coming out against that Galuga duel right there, as zone will be contested, but both the ballers will have something to say about that, and that will be flipping the zone back to their side. Was time taking away? I it's looking even dire and dire for Toe Steppers. Yeah, I think this is going to be the end for them. Blue is being forced into a 2v1. Loses, only the try is left, and there's only single digits left on the clock. A very commanding opening by Staff Fan Club, just shutting things down. And I think a lot of what helped is they had a lot of paint, but their weapons also had a lot of high damage output, and they their comp allowed them to move very quickly. They painted up, they did a lot of damage, and they just kept running around the map and very quickly killing everyone on the side of Toe Steppers. Definitely. The biggest thing about the staff's fan club play there was just keeping the other Toe Steppers on the move. Just because of that, that didn't allow that their charger to even remotely get into a good position to try and get a few picks off. And they just, staff fan club just kept up the aggression. Now we're going to be going on to... Clemblitz on Snapper Canal, perhaps the epitome of tournament Clemblitz maps because of how often you see it in basically every tournament. And it is worth noting that the players did vote for these maps in the map pool, so I guess people do like it, and that's probably why it keeps showing up in tournaments. I assume so. I'm not personally in that boat, but I guess if enough people like it, it's, it's good enough. Mm. It's a good map to test like team coordination because you have so many different areas you have to control and I think that's going to be especially interesting in a draft tournament you haven't had much time to play with your team in. I also think that if that we'll see that double baller comp come out because it's going to be even better in clams as both of those ballers provide an entry point to get to the basket and start to push maybe jump a power clam in or just clear some space with the explosion. Definitely. It's, it's going to be very interesting to see what Toe Steppers are going to change about their comp to try and make up for that lack in, well, aggression compared to Staff Fan Club. I think it might actually be better for them to keep running this comp because this map's a bit more spread out. It's got some really long sight lines, but they need to play defense. And they aren't actually going to bring the Charger back out, but I think v that looks like a V-Jet. That is a V-Jet. It's going to be a very good pick here because... That's, there's no longer a double baller comp, but it allowed them to slow down both the ballers coming out of Froppy and generally slow down anyone trying to push. And then between a Jet and a Squeezer, anyone tra trapped in that mist is going to get lasered. Now we've got an early fight between that Bucket and Ty, hey, with both of them being forced back off. One's already down Toe Steppers, and the Bucket's gonna get a nice pick set there. 3v3 situation on the map right now. As we're going to be seeing the rest of Staff's fan club trying to pincer the rest of Toe Steppers into, well, forcing them into that bucket right here, as that bucket is doing a very good job at applying an immense amount of pressure and getting that kill of those picks in. As that's, you can see right here, the bucket is taking the range advantage over most of the team on Toe Steppers and just being what a bucket should be, which is an annoyance. So it's worth noting that, well, Staff Fan Club might be lacking a bit of paint here. They have exceptionally high damage between 52, Glugas, and Bucket. They can do a lot of damage and they can do it from range, as we saw in that first match. Just gonna help them against, say, weapons like Try or Splash that rely on just charging in. If they get picked off from range before they can charge in, there's not much they can do. I also just generally like to see V Glugas because it's nice to see people doing off meta weapons like that. And Definitely. Glugas are a force to be reckoned with if you're good at them because oh. they kill stupid fast and they're really accurate for how high their damage can be in turret mode. Yeah, definitely. As we're seeing the rest of Staff Fan Club pushing under the basket of Toast Evers, the Inkjet's gonna be coming out, finding the pick on that jet right there and putting immense amounts of pressure on everyone else. Though they are gonna be picked off by the Neo Splash, putting the 
took Team Staff Fan Club down three players as their fourth, the last remaining bucket is going to back off from their base and play defensively as they're waiting for the rest of the team to come back. They now have the bomb rush is coming out from the solution matic here as they are going to be using that to get to more plans, make that super and look for that opening. The bomb rush, I was a bit skeptical at first because it didn't look like it was really getting in where it was popped from a bit of an awkward position. But it seems to have gotten two steppers just enough space to get their push and get. Looks like at least one power climbing, yeah, getting down to 61. Sorry, this seems a little blurry, I can't sell 605. But either way, blue getting the nice picks, continuing to exert pressure, throw clams in, and yes, down to 48 now, which is a really good push if we're only halfway through the game and given how much of a stamina this match has been that could very well be have been the winning score but since toe steppers did get wiped stuff and club does have a chance to come back take a lot of map control instead of an even stronger push definitely as we see the rest of toe steppers here trying to get paint for their special to get that counter paint off on team Staff fan club right now as most of all staff fan club has their specials right here as Team Toe Steppers has noticed that. They started using their specials. Baller goes out, isn't going to be finding anyone, but forces the entire enemy of Toe Steppers back into their base. Inkjet is coming off the staff fan club, not going to be finding anyone, but forcing the, even more of the Toe Steppers back into their base. And Luga's coming in, going to be found out by that tri slash who is going to be taking them out, and the Enza and the uh, Enza along with that. The Enza is then going to be back off right here, as you can see. Yes, and what allowed that push to happen was that when Froppy popped that baller, we saw three members of Two Steppers cluster toward that left hill, which provided an opening for Staff Fan Club. The Staff Fan Club's push was cut short because Two Steppers were able to quickly rotate back to their base and then from base to cover their basket and get the picks to clean up that push before it became a bigger problem. Now the bubbles from blue are going to get another nice entry. Getting down into 20s in the teens, this is looking like it could very well be a KO with a few more clams. And two members did go down in that mess, so they're still going to be respawning, they're not going to have specials. The, the bucket putting some good work right there, getting picks, and the bucket, or the basket, seems to get a clam in, but didn't really because it goes back down and back up, and that's... Well, that's what happens when you're playing an online game, there's a bit of lag, but nothing we can really do about that. And now, Fast Fan Club is going to have another opportunity to start pushing up. With 30 seconds left on that clock, Staff Fan Club is looking definitely to make a push right here. Getting their clams together, grabbing that super clam, throwing two of them in, missing their third one though, as it's going to be picked up, but unfortunately that is going to be a wipe on the side of Staff Fan Club as Toe Steppers is looking to get even more specials, and as it's getting into... Pure desperation mode for Staff Fan Club right here as they are look scrambling to get clams. A nice pick by Woomy right there, dodging on the squeezer until they finally got a shot. And then we see Woomy throwing those clams back, try to get their teammate clams, but it's just not going to be enough, and that's going to be the game going to Toe Steppers, tying the set at one. Toe Steppers showing the fact that they are not going to be going down without a fight. Using that open range and the wide open spaces to their advantage with the blue using their bubbles only twice, but those two bubbles that they used were immensely powerful at getting them into their base and getting clams in that basket. Yeah, that was a turnaround from what we saw last match with Toe Steppers, or rather, yes, with Toe Steppers becoming the dominant ones. And it just seemed that Staff and Club was a little less coordinated and they were it probably didn't help that they'd got maybe got a little confident going into that first match. Like, yeah, we can do this, we can beat them easily. And then it gets turned back around on them and Staff is a map where it can be tricky to get in, and we saw that throughout the first half of the match. Then once Toe Steppers started making a move, it probably threw Staff Fan Club off because they're like, wait, they pushed us back after they'd already gotten confident. I'm sure that didn't help, along with all the other things we saw happen. Definitely. Coming up next, we got Rainmaker on Snapper Can- Nope, wrong map. Surgeon Shipyard. A bit distracted by the last map, but as we're going into this, it's a very uncommonly a very uncommon map and mode combo. Very rarely seen in tournament settings. Mm, I've seen- I wouldn't say it's rare per se, but it's definitely less common than saying seeing Blackbelly Rainmaker. I've definitely seen it a fair amount of map lists. It's not like it's more Iron Maker or anything, which I yes. hope we see in more map lists, but unfortunately we can't. I wouldn't expect too much of a comp change as we go into this map, especially because it is another fast mode, and I think 
both teams are a bit happy with what they're running. And yes, we nope. see the only change we see on Staff Fan Club is a K shot coming around instead to provide missile support. And now they've got a double missile comp, which is probably quite annoying. And the only. And probably bring out that blob for a bit more range on the side of Staff Fan Club. You can also see that almost everyone on Toast Stepper is running Object Shredder except for that Trislodge who is running Ninja Jump, which is going to be very interesting to see how they use that, if they use that against Ballers at all. Yes, uh, as, as we've already seen, the missiles coming out from Toe Stepper to allow them to push directly into mid. They're going to be grabbing Rainmaker and taking the side pack right here. Going to be bringing it up really far and allowing the Rainmaker to make that jump. They do make that jump. The Squeezer is getting the kill off here. The Galugas are too busy dealing with the Flint to deal with, dealing with the Squeezer to get the kill on the Rainmaker as they bring it to 21 points. That is an immensely good push on this map. Yes, that was... Textbook, really nice shots by the squeezer to at least kill clear out the person trying to kill the rainmaker, and then they get a nice, at least a distraction on the glue player, allowing the rainmaker to get as far as they did. And now Toast Steppers retained mid control despite having had their push stop. They didn't get wiped. They managed to keep mid control, and they've kept so much presence throughout the entire game. And that's gonna be two down in Sass Fighting Club. Toast Steppers probably doesn't have an opening just yet, or maybe they do because they just take down Froppy like that, and that's gonna be. Probably the best defensive tool that Sass Fan Club have is that blob to exert pressure over a large area and keep painting it. Get the Rainmaker reveal push up. Now, well, this looks like the is gonna get much further unless they can somehow kill Froppy because blob in that narrow area area isn't letting anyone through. As two people are gonna be going down the Staff Fan Club along with Toast Stepper, that is gonna be forcing the Rainmaker to go back. Floppy quickly rotating onto that K shot, taking them out, not allowing them to get into the base and take them out. Rainmaker is gonna be going down right now as there are two down on Toast Steppers. Though Toast Steppers are still having a dramatic influence over mid right now as they are continuing that push. Trislosh getting the double kill and then going down to the to Floppy as we are gonna be seeing them take up the Rainmaker and or try and push it so they are gonna be bombed out by this. Yes, and they took the Rainmaker where they had absolutely no support from the team. We saw two jumps come in to help them, but they just weren't there when they needed it, allowing Toe Steppers to simply crossfire them and get an easy pick on them. And now Toe Steppers are backed up a little bit. They're still an ink shit out and getting a nice pick on shots right there. Wumi with an excellent shot and pick up the Rainmaker now, going for a push. They've got an opening. Try going down. That's going to be a 2 dead situation for Toe Steppers, allowing Staff Fan Club to push up, but they've got a long way to go, and that bomb is going to spell their ends and get a double. That was a triple kills of bomb as the Staff Fan Club is going to be completely wiped. Toe Steppers noticing this, popping that Rainmaker and getting that paint on the ground, especially in mid, dominating it right now as they've been doing this entire match. As we're going to be seeing Floppy take up that top left area, as they are gonna be shooting into mid using their Bob Lobber, which is why a Bob Lobber is such an immensely good pick on this map mode right now. Yeah, I really like that they did switch the Blob. Like you said, really good pick from map, really good amount of pressure they can provide, but if they get shoved in the corner like that, it's gonna be a lot different with two members of Toast Steppers going to finish them off, so a nice trade coming out there to at least take some of Toast Steppers' resources away, but again, Toast Steppers has been control, They've got all the space they could want to work with. They're just keeping Staff Fan Club back because they don't have to do anymore. They don't have to set up a big push. They can just pave the ground, get a pick here and there, and keep Staff Fan Club out of mid and they win the game. Though it would be good for them to at least set up another push because the farther the Rainmaker is into your opponent's base, the better it is for you because the harder it is for them to get it back to your side and then to a higher score than you. As we're gonna see the Staff Fan Club right here picking up the Rainmaker with no real advantage right here. Trislosh is going to be finding the pick on the Galugas right there. As we're going to be seeing the rest of Toe Steppers trying to go for the Rainmaker. The Rainmaker there is going to be getting a double kill though. As they are going to be trying to push to the side right there. Their escort of the Enzap is going to be going down. As their timer on the, on the Rainmaker explosion is taking away. There's 21 seconds left on that clock. That's really all they have right now. The bubbles are going to be coming out from that. Squeezer right there, who is gonna isn't gonna be finding the pit kill right there with 12, 11 seconds left on the Rainmaker. They are in desperation, gonna be going down there with 25 seconds left on that clock. The Rainmaker shield is gonna be popped though that sweet that C Jet is gonna be still getting the pick right there. 17 seconds. Two toe steppers are gonna be uh. up the Rainmaker and jumping off the edge to reset it, giving 
Zap Band Club free reign over that Rainmaker with six seconds left on that clock. It is all up to this Rainmaker to stay alive and not get picked off by Toast Ever. I'm not sure why Shad jumped off there. They had plenty of space to just pull the Rainmaker back safely. So I guess they probably felt a little more pressured and decided to jump it off, get it back in the mid, and they still get the stop anyway. Also, speaking of Shad, really good defense by them at the end, right there. Really the good defense. Really good defense by Toe Steppers as they are going to be moving on to the next round. Yes, and I think that was well played by Toe Steppers. They took a pretty nasty loss in the first game. They brought it back in spectacular fashion. Really good play by them, and I think some really good adjustments, especially. I think that VJet helped more than we noticed, especially in allowing them to defend and keep those. Pushes from Staff's Fan Club being much of an issue just because Mist and Rainmaker Clam slows down the carriers of those things so much. Definitely. But and with that, we're... Oh, sorry, you go, go for it. <laughs> Alright. With that, as we both are desperately about to say, we're going to take a break. We're taking a break, and we'll be back for the second round of Top Cut in just a bit. Please stay tuned.
Hello and welcome back to Launchpoint Draft Cup 8 with our quarterfinals. And now we'll be seeing As a Treat versus Weird Autumn. I'm Quark and I'm joined here by Butter. What's up everyone? I'm still here unfortunately. I mean fortunately. Fortunately, definitely not unfortunately. I'm not being held here by uh, against my will at all. Like twice if you're in danger. I can't blink. <laughs> oh no. Someone help please. Oh no. Anyways, as we're going on <laughs> to our uh, quarterfinals, we got our first map of Splat Sounds in New Albacore Hotel. How do you feel about this map? I feel like this is going to be a great backline map. And knowing some of the players in both these teams, I think both of them, some of them are pretty happy because a kill from Azatreat plays, among other things, Explosher. And then Colonel Wumi from Weird Autumn is a blob main, among other things. And I believe Alex might play Charger as well, so. Could very well be quite the backline bonanza here on Splat Zone's Abacore Hotel. Definitely. It's going to be very interesting to see what they... Well, if they do run uh, what they normally run, or if they go for something interesting. Splat I know most of the people in Weird Autumn, and I can tell you, we're probably going to see a roller from Slug, and then Blob from Colonel Wumi. I'm not sure what Alex is going to play, and then if I think is more of a frontline player, if I recall correctly. Well, I've got no idea because I've never seen these people, but... <laughs> yes. As for... As a treat, I believe it kills, like... At least Explosher, maybe K-Pro and such as well. I don't know any of the other players, though. But Oh, Div! If it's who I'm thinking of, I've played some drafts with them. They're a Dynamo main? Things? Or not Dynamo, but, like, a lot of different weapons. Very long ranks. So we're not really sure what we're going to see from... As a treat. I just know their names are various... Foodstuffs. Dessert type Delicacies. Foodstuffs. Yes. Milkshake, cheesecake, chocolate, and something else, I believe, because Moo told us all the names beforehand, which I appreciate. I'm not sure which. I have no idea who's what, but here we go. I have no idea. We've got and coffee cake, coffee cheesecake, cake. ice cream, and milk food. And, and we, we do the ice washer. We will be seeing the X-Bosh coming out, which is a very interesting pick on this map, especially if they can play it around the grades, and if they've gotten used to hitting people directly, that can be a very good thing to catch someone off guard with. So we're going to be seeing right here in the middle, the K-52 is trying to paint up the mid here as they will be able to get that zone. Booyah Bomb is going to be forcing them off along with those missiles right here, going to be taking out that the K shot there who tried to jump onto them as that's going to be three down on the side of Weird Autumn. Yes, and Weird Autumn is going to be able to start moving back to the mid now. They've got a double backline comp so they can pressure zone from a distance. Though both their backlines probably going to get a bit annoyed by the Explosher because while they outrange the Explosher, the Explosher can, doesn't need to hit them with while having sight lines so they'll be able to the Explosher will be able to shoot them while they can't shoot the Explosher. And now we see Weird Autumn briefly getting the zone back, but now they're locked out yet again. It's a 4 4 situation, but the specials are an advantage of as a treat, and Weird Autumn just hasn't been able to get in there. Junior goes down, another member goes down. And the Explosher does exactly what I was talking about. The Charger can't hit them, but they can fire right down onto the Charger. Okay, so I'm seeing this seeing the dynamo roller being in Bria Bomb, waiting for them to come down. They as they do come down, they take that pick as 38 points is remaining. They're just the K shot here is putting major pressure on that charger right there and not letting them even remotely close. Missling them while they're in the ray to try and take them out. See the junior hopping down, taking out that MZAP and just leaving the K shot as the only lone survivor right here. Gonna be taking out that junior, which is gonna be a central pick because that's gonna be armored down on the side of Weird Autumn. That's a really good trade by the K shot there, despite all the pressure they're under. And now Weird Autumn's gonna be taking their timer down. They've got a long way to go to catch up with Acid Street, and they've already used their missiles, but they didn't really do anything else other than pop their missiles as they're delaying tactic. And now multiple specials will come in for Weird Autumn. A nice double coming out, but at the same time, as a treat just paints the zone. And the triple coming out from... I believe that's... The K... Uh, the K coming out from the K shot. As they're almost going to get that quad, though it's going to be stolen from them. As the K-52 is going to be standing, trying to sit above them and take them out. As they know the fact that the zone is just taking away and that... As the tree just needs to get in there and take that zone back. The bubbles are ready on the side of our 
uh, as a treat, ready to go in there. The missile stopping them from pushing in as they are using it now with the one down. The bubbles go out. Gonna get, the X-Watch is going down to a bomb, which is going to make the bubbles almost useless, as, though the zone will be flipped to as a treat. Yeah, the X-Watch might have gone down, but it forced the members of Weird Autumn to divert some of their resources off to taking them down and keep the bubbles from being an issue, which allowed as a treat to sneak in that cap a bit before Weird Autumn got the lead. Now a nice pick of the way, three down on as a treat, and Weird Autumn's got the chance to push up here. They've got the armor ready. They've got the charger in a great place to zone out numbers of as a treat. The expo is gonna be a bit of an issue hiding behind that little wall, shooting down the charger. Now the armor comes out and there's only a few penalty points left. This is almost certainly going to be weird lead for Weird Autumn unless something crazy happens. And that will be the lead and potentially the KO to pick. And then the 52 goes down. There's only two members left that aren't off of spawn, and Weird Autumn is looking like there's going to be able to hold this. As the countdown is starting right down. now, the X-Wash is going to be going down, along with the K-Shot unable to do anything. The Booyah is in the air, and that is KO. Weird Autumn going to be taking a very hefty comeback from that, and going to be taking the first point of this game. The double backline call, this is probably one of the best maps to run in. I think it helps them a bit, because how much paint they could just keep Putting on the zone from a distance, keep pressure from a distance, and once that charger got set up, we saw how much damage they were able to do. Taking down the Explo, once the Explo thought they were safe to expose themselves, try to paint the zone, and they just got sniped because they don't have the range advantage on a charger. All they have is the lack of needing line of sight, and now we're going to be going to your next map, which I believe is PC on Piranha Pit. We're, well, we've seen this earlier. Well, you weren't there for that, but it's always a very interesting. Well, actually, we saw clam blitz on this. I'm actually, don't mind me. Uh, as it's a very interesting map for tower control, as half of the tower goes into your base after going towards the enemy, and then it comes back. So you never know what's gonna happen. Definitely an interesting map like that, and probably. Really annoying ones to push because your opponents can fire down from all those ledges and make it very difficult. But on the other hand, those ledges they're using are quite small, so some bomb spam, a booyah bomb, a bomb rush, etc., can make it so you can push very far with little resistance. But your opponents are welcome to do that as well. So it's a very tricky map to push, whether you're pushing the objective or trying to push back to the objective. Definitely. It's going to be very interesting to see what type of comp comes out of both teams here. If they're going to try and use the same thing they just used a few set, uh, on the last match, or continue or try and spice it up a little bit with some other weapons coming out. Yeah. I think we'll see Weird Autumn keep at least one of their backlines. Probably not both because Prana Pit's more cramped, but keeping either of those backlines will give them a special they can use to stop the tower. And. That's great always, but especially if they've got a lead and opponents are say making a last ditch or an overtime push. That's the that just allows them to win the game freely with throwing a booyah in or popping a ray out. Unless your opponents have something up and they'll pop bring both out again. Charger and Dynamo Roller, which is gonna create so much pressure as a distance, they're just gonna be careful not to get rushed down here. It's gonna be very interesting to see the K shot switch out for the rap the crap it as we're going to be seeing the 52 taking up on the, the as a treat own conveyor right here. Going to be trying to find the pick on that dynamo roller. Not going to be finding it, but is going to be getting out of a sticky situation right there as it's very even on both sides with the K-Shot going down on the Beard Adam Autumn side as they take tower along with the K-52. That's a bit of an awkward boot for the K-52. I think they might have panicked a little there. And that, combined with the bomb they got hit with afterward, and another pick coming out on Acid Treat. Weird Autumn is going to be able to push, and they've got both their two long-range specials, two of their three long-range specials, rather, coming out to clear the plot and get let them keep pushing up. Now the missile's coming out as well, still a three-down situation. That jet drops in trying to stop something, but it's just... They left themselves so exposed there, and now the three shorter-range players on Acid Treat are stuck up in their bots. Another Booyah coming out from Slug. And this is looking like Weird Autumn could very quickly snubble this using their specials so well. They just keep having them come out, and it's so hard for 
I said the chip got back in because they're always getting constantly pressured and chip damaged. Definitely. As we see the Ray coming out here and getting the nice, getting a really good pick on that end up there, which unfortunately, though, for them will not allow them to continue the push. Bringing it to 14, though, I mean, 19 on one push, though, is an amazingly good push as the rest of as a treat has to push that tower back, back through their base, through their base, and honestly, through the enemy's flat area. As we're going to be seeing this Crapid right here trying to or at least displace that Dynamo Roller and, and, and Junior. As we're going to be seeing the Baller coming out, not going to be finding a target, but going to be displacing two people at least. Directing that case shot, not going to be finding the kill there. As two down on as a tree, we're in Autumn is starting to take tower again. Yeah. The Blaster provided a distraction for as a tree to start pushing, but they just lost too many other members in other fights for that. Distraction to be worth anything, and now as a treat, can, or rather, Weird Autumn can just start taking map control again, painting up, popping some more specials, and they're not, they're gonna set up another push, but they don't really need to push it that far. They just need to keep exerting pressure, popping their specials, and making it hard for as a treat to control mid. Definitely, as we see as a treat go two down right here with that dynamo. The ray is coming out on the side of as a treat. It's the dynamo now knows where that blaster is and is gonna be trying to put them out of position and get them out of there before they can get their special and get put into a better position to try and take out the rest of the team. As the blaster is gonna be taking out the junior on tower, that has not caused the end of the push yet. As tower is now gonna be starting to move back, but just because it's moving back doesn't mean that Weird Autumn is just gonna let off on that push. Yeah, Weird Autumn, they might not be pushing tower like you said, but they're still pushing up, they're still painting up. And their backlots are keeping a lot of control of Dynamo, throwing ink everywhere. Now, as a treat, has tries to pop a Booyah Bomb to get back into mid, but it's really not going to do much, and they're going to lose a member, though the Dynamo and Weird Autumn goes down as well. And as a treat, finally has a chance to push, but as soon as they have a chance to push, they go three down, and now Weird Autumn will continue to push up, throwing some bombs, and just sort of sitting on the tower. Kalon's just going to probably sit here, paint up, throw some bombs, like I said, and then let their other teammates keep putting the special pressure in while they paint for armor and add a little more of their own chip damage into the mix. As we're going to see the Ray coming out and on the side of as a tree, we're going to see them pop armor and Weird Autumn is going to immediately counter armor against them as the tower is just continuing to being ridden as the junior is going to be going down on tower as that is not going to be reached checkpoint yet. The Weird Bomb is coming out, it's just, a, it's just the jet holding down the line as as a tree take two of Weird Autumn down as the sniper is going to be taking down that see as we taking down that jet with 50 seconds left on that clock team Weird Autumn all they need to do is hold back and get that ray ready and shoot it at that tower as soon as as a tree tries to make a push here yes and very good job by Weird Autumn to just continue to push tower keep pressure on even under the pressure as or rather Weird Autumn doing that and as a tree even while they're putting on pressure, this haven't been able to enough. 1v1 situation, this Rapid's all the way pushed up. I'm hoping their teammates can make it back to the tower in time. They'll use the baller to do that, which I don't really think they needed to do because that Charger didn't have terribly good sights on them. They could have just swam back and probably not gotten shot, and that's going to cost them where a last minute baller on the tower could have allowed them to potentially keep a push going through a special or otherwise help them, but now Dynamo fighting the Rapid 1v1, and that's, I don't think it's going to be enough, even though as is still the tower. Tower is just going to be taken to Ray, Ray is going to be hit, and Weird Autumn, using all their specials and advantages, is going to take them out, and that is going to be Weird Autumn taking the game to zero. Very well played by Weird Autumn, dominant 2-0 right there. A very aggressive play and just overall really well played on the side of Weird Autumn. Special coordination was I think a bit better in the first match, and they just kept popping specials that would zone out as a treat, and as a treat didn't have the same level of coordination. They didn't have quite the same specials that quite the density amount of specials that allowed them to keep zoning things out, but they weren't able to coordinate theirs much at all, really. Definitely. As we're going to be taking a quick break in between our, well, before semifinals, stay tuned. We're going to be switching to best of five as teams are going to start duking out for that lustrous title.
Welcome back everyone to Draft Point Cup number 8. As we're going into our semi-finals, we did a speed run of getting everyone into the lobby. This uh, outstanding job by everyone. Uh, as we're back here, I'm Butters still, as I'm also still joined by Quark, as we're moving on to best of five now. Yes, and well, this seems to do a good job pressing the A button and moving the directional stick quickly to type the password in. Always appreciate when he's getting quick because... this. Tournaments running on time is always a nice thing, and having to wait for stream matches is no fun for anyone. And the teams we will be seeing that typed in their password so fast are going to be Fruit Basket and iPad Gods, which makes sense they got in here so fast. They're probably used to typing their passwords in their iPads or what have you. Definitely. Well, I believe we had... Yep, iPad Gods was on stream earlier, our first round. Of groups it's nice to see that they're back already and ready for another fight as they're going up against uh fruit basket who have been dominating their bracket so far two zeroing every other team that they played against and going perfect in their group stage these are titans duking, duking it out right now yeah they are well they are fed gods for a reason and we're going to have to see if Fruit Basket is going to be able to continue the run or if iPad Gods is going to put it to the stop. And we're going to start on Clem Blitz the Reef and... That's an interesting comp coming out of... I believe that's iPad Gods. I like... As we I see really iPad... I really like it. As we see iPad Gods going for their signature bubble strategy again along with their tent. A very interesting... Always interesting comp was though. I'm kind of surprised they didn't go for the K Jr., but you know you can't win them all. As we're gonna be seeing Fruit Basket here pushing directly into their bait into iPad God's base. Gonna be going two down though, as iPad Gods see this, and they are going in for that kill on that Jr. right here. As you can just see, iPad Gods taking advantage of their misfortune. Uh, Fruit Basket's misfortune and misplacement and using it to their fullest advantage. Their stamp is going to be cancelled as one of them is going to be going into Inkjet. Not going to be finding two people allowing the rest of iPad Gods to come in and try and get scores and plan. Yeah, Inkjet really kept that for me total collapse for iPad Gods because first it seemed like it came out a bit too late. That had already gone down, but then it got a double and at least kept this game neutral instead of leaving a massive opening for Fruit Basket. Now Fruit Basket's going in with bubbles of their own. They've got the Power Climb jump, but it's be too late. The Power Climb carrier, or rather a different member that seems to be stabbed in the back. The Power Climb carrier's going down as well. Let's be another opening for iPad Gods, who have such a great comp between the tent, the bubbles, the hammer, for just getting in and putting pressure on. And surprisingly, the first armorless comp we've seen in this top cut, which, I mean, it's good to see a comp out armor, because we've always seen armor, and... This nice to feel doing something different, and they've still got so many ways to get in without that armor, they don't need it. As we can see here, the Inkjet is going to be going up, putting immense amount of pressure in. The bubble is going to be used as an amazing shield right there. They're going to be missing that second Super Clam as they... Starting to score up right now. Then Fruit Basket's going to push up. Popping that bomb rush maybe a little early, trying to get back into mid. They've got mid control. Now this bucket will try to take a fight on the against the spot lane. The spot lane is just like, I've got the range, you can't do that. And now the tent pushing up with the bubbles and perhaps saving both of those members from dying to the bubbles with the tent shield. Really good play right there. And now we see this ball point spot lane continue to just put up, hang back. 
Keep some pressure, keep some paint. And the bucket's back for round two, and this time the bucket's gonna win the fight. And now there's gonna be an opening for Fruit Basket to push up and try to take the lead. So we see the bucket here being forced to go away from that tent as the tent is looking to take that mid position with as they have that hammer and just being a tent in general. This slosher here sees this her, sees this K shot Octa, I mean Octave shot off on their own and just um, ready to go for that pick. He's gonna be missing their burst bomb rush though and uh, isn't gonna be fully finding that as they are gonna be getting armor and pushed even further into the base. Fruit Basket is one person down though and then two people down and the entirety of iPad guys know where that bucket is. Bucket is gonna be going down as that is gonna be two down on the side of Fruit Basket. iPad gods are using this to their advantage using the buff, pushing into the base, using that tent shield, getting their bubbles of their own. Gonna be scoring a basket right here. If they pop their bubbles and are just gonna be using to keep on scoring those clans, bringing it past 50 and down to 44, and gonna be that, but that will be the end of that push right there. Really excellent rain placement by the ball point right there, zoning out fruit basket for long enough for the score to get down to 44. Bubbles could have been used as a shield instead of getting popped immediately, but other than that, Really good push by iPad Gods, and now Fruit Basket's gonna move up with the push of their own, having gotten that wipe. Clears out the 10 shield and picks the tent, which is gonna make their lives much easier. But they drop in a little too fast and fall out a bunch of missiles, and now they've gotta clean up all these clams. They've got the resources to make this push, at least in terms of clams, and they have the 3v3. They just have to take a little longer to change their special stuff. Bubbles come out, armor comes up, the armor's a little late, and the bubble player is picked off, and they just can't get in. And. Looks like we have a bit of lag there, but they do get finally get in or not. The score's still reading a hundred. Okay. Uh, the the there lag we go. seems La to be La lagging La heavily amount. As we're gonna be seeing the rest of uh, iPad gods getting themselves ready to in better position to try and get uh, a strong hold over not only mid but their own base so that Fruit Basket can't push because all Fruit Basket needs right now is two super clams in that basket. All they have though is 19 seconds to do that. All iPad Gods needs to do right now is get up their specials, which they do. The hammer coming out, taking out the ball in mid. Nine seconds left on the clock. All Fruit Basket, I mean, iPad Gods have to do is hold positions right here and let that clam disappear, though they aren't going to be able to do that. Clam goes down, two people left on Fruit Basket. iPad Gods are taking advantage of this, pushing into their base as it's just the K shot left on Fruit Basket, and that is game. That was well played by iPad Gods. We saw them use their specials a lot more effectively than Fruit, ba Fruit Basket, I think. Especially that the slosher on the side of Fruit Basket seemed to kind of pop their bomb rush without thinking about it too much. They definitely got a lot of picks, but there a lot of times we saw like a whole bomb rush thrown at the Octo Shot's little value, and I think that's what hurt Fruit Basket most is they just had trouble coordinating. We saw them passing around clams trying to get in, but by the time. They could do that, and that their best opportunity. They got their bubbles up, the armor wasn't there, and they just got picked again. And struggled, in general, to get in. Definitely. The iPad gods just being able to coordinate slightly better than Fruit Basket, and just getting their specials off with each other, just really dominated that match, and was extremely good at playing defensive and offensively, especially around those bubbles. Yeah, so now we're going to be going to TC on Starfish main stage. Any thoughts about that? TC on st on Starfish main stage. I can't. I genuinely cannot remember the last time I played this map in mode. It's pretty common in comp scenes. It's a map I think a lot of people like again, and definitely an interesting one tower control wise because the first checkpoint it means nothing. It's pretty easy to break, but the problem becomes once you have to get through this the second checkpoint. You've got to use what you've done in the first checkpoint to get onto your opponent's plot, or rather snipe, and start exerting pressure, because that's the only way you can clear the second checkpoint, because of how much elevated area is has clear lines of sight on the second checkpoint, and once you get through the second checkpoint, that's generally when you have a large advantage against the other team. Definitely. As we can see coming into this match here, we've got a fairly similar comp, except for on the side well, on both sides, they did do a lot of switching up, but more importantly, on iPad Gods, they are pulling out that K Jr. again, which is, this has been a notorious player right here on their team, with using those bubbles and everyone working around this Jr. to get to pop at any point. As you can see right here, they're already going for it, getting the single kill, going for the double kill, gonna be grabbing that drop right there, 
as that is going to be an almost wipe on the side of Fruit Baskets. I've had gods coming out swinging with that junior right here in the bubbles. Such an immensely powerful combo. Yeah, that junior, if they're going to keep having bubbles, that's going to be a good counter against, say, the K52 on iPad gods. Or rather on Fruit... Or, yes, on Fruit Basket, which is going to let them keep pushing up and deal with the walls because bubbles will just cut right through them and those huge explosions will nullify a lot of what K-52 is considered most annoying for and Lappy getting a nice double here before taking down and iPad Gods has already gotten up to that second checkpoint they're not there yet they're not through it yet but they're basically there and that will be their push but an excellent opening push for iPad Gods definitely as we see this as we can see with the 52 gal pushing up into into iPad God's uh, base as the 52, I mean, the junior is going to try and contest it, though they do go up into the rear bomb, which forces the K52 to back off. The fake hit, K52 is getting their bubbles ready as they do have it now. Did not 100% going to be denying the checkpoint push right here. Going to be starting off, the, trying to start off the combo here. Unfortunately, going to be going down to the C jet though. So this is going to be a good push for Fruit Basket. They've gotten through, or gotten to the first checkpoint, and they're almost certainly going to get through with only Junior remaining. They're going to break it. The Junior's trying to do something, throwing some torpedoes, but they're looking like they're in good position to get through this area, leading to the second checkpoint. Getting hit by a torpedo, but they've popped their specials and just kept iPad guns away from the tower long enough to take the lead. They won't get lead by much with members of iPad guns rushing in, the jet getting picked off from above by the ball point. Trades coming out, but the trades are going to be working for iPad Gods. It's be a lot harder for Fruit Basket to push and say a 2v1 rather than like a 4v2 because that ball point can continue to hold, keep firing pressure down, popping that brain. So iPad... The Fruit Basket does a good job of taking that snipe and keeping the ball point from being as much of a hindrance as it could have been. As we can see, Fruit Basket here just never letting up on the aggression here, seeing that last time that they, as soon as they stopped being aggressive, fruit iPad Gods took full advantage of that. As they just keep on going, iPad Gods getting that essential pick right there, stopping the push dead in its tracks as they are pushing directly into mid so they can get their specials up and get kills so they can get entries into the base. As you can see right here, the Booyah Bomb is going off right now from the K-Gow, uh, K-5, no, the Kenza Flatter Shot Pro. As we can see, them taking out the jet, which might be an essential pick right here. Going even further in, tower is ready to go right now on the team on the side of iPad Gods. All they need to do is stand on that and get going. Unfortunately, though, two go down on the side of iPad Gods. Make that three. The jump was not successful. It's just the junior, as the rest of Fruit Basket is pushing directly into their base and getting ready to make that to make it to that second checkpoint again. And Fruit Basket will lose one there, but they've still got the initiative. They've got an looks like another member down on iPad Gods as well. Missiles coming out just to keep this ball point for real hold position. Maybe a little area because the ball point just able to rotate back. But now there's a booyah there, and some crossfire will come in for iPad Gods, letting them get a pick there. But they don't just need to be defending now. And the lot more to this Fruit Basket is pushing, the longer the clock's going to tick down, the less time iPad Gods is going to have. To push and they're taking a trade here they've stopped this push but they can't just be stopping the pushes for fruit basket they've got to be able to win the fights cleanly and push up but they just keep taking trades they've finally got a notable person advantage they've got a 3v1 in their hands with members of fruit basket responding responding but now i've had gone through this pick them and they don't have much time to do it and a good pick of the 52 there to keep that gg booyah from coming in we also quicker. see a pick on the end zap right there as it's the C jet getting rushed down, gonna be taken out by that splatter shot junior who is going for that bubble combo right now, getting back on tower, taking not taking able to take out the take out the 52 wisdom as how is three go down on the side of fruit basket. The push may not be over on the side of iPad gods. Three seconds left on that clock. Tower is being ridden. All they need to do is make it to that second checkpoint and get that points into overtime. We have bomb going out, gonna be taking tower. No one is able to mm. save it, and that is game. Yes, they weren't quite they were really close to getting 52. The 52 just got their boot off a second before they could have killed them and capped the GG boot from coming in. The other thing that kind of hurt them was that bubbles came out to where they thought 
Fruit Basket was, but not actually where Fruit Basket was. And excellent job by this has Splash and Fruit Basket while the players of iPad got 17k each. Both te really well played by both teams, but and that's why the game was so close. We at least it was 40 to 47. It wasn't like 99 to 15 or anything. Definitely. It was a very close and a very uh, it was a very aggressive comps on both sides, which allowed for a very uh, interesting match to go over right there. Especially with that Cave Jr. being able to get their bubbles off as soon as they could and as fast as they could was really, really good for them on the side of iPad Gods. Yes, and now we're going to be moving on to our next match, which is going to be Rainmaker and Black Blaze Skate Park. The quintessential Splatoon Rainmaker match. At least in this meta, because everyone seems to like playing it, but everyone also complains about having to deal with the race spam. So I'm hoping we don't see too much race spam here, but we are going to have some race spam here probably, especially if there is at least one jet main here. Definitely going to be very interesting to see what they go here. I'm not a personal big fan of this map. I feel like it's a bit too too short. It makes the matches go a bit too fast, but you know, it's Rainmaker. It's always going to go fast. The entire idea of Rainmaker is to be fast, so we'll see if both teams keep up the heavy aggression. We'll see. I want to see that K Junior come back into play here, but it will, I won't be that upset if it doesn't. I think K Junior is really good here, because as much as this is considered a very fast map, if you actually have space to move, it can be a very difficult map to find that space to move, to move up. And we... We'll see the K-Junior, but we'll see the K-Junior player pull out a Sorella Brella, which I think is a good pick. Having that bomb rush will let them pop the Rainmaker Sylvester, and that's a Zinc mini spotlight. That's something you don't see every day, which I think is a good pick here. It'll have curling bombs to create paths for players to push up, especially the Rainmaker player, and then rain to zone people out. And combined with the bomb rush and the Booyah and the Inkjet, they're going to have specials that have a lot of power to just zone out the members of Fruit Basket. Well, Fruit Basket's running a more traditional comp, we've got the K-Shot, we've got the Splash, the Junior, and then the Race Band, the Sea Jet. As we can see here, it's just the Junior remaining, as they are trying to find some kills right here, and the Lord just survived. I am survived what is going on with them. As we can just see them teleporting all around, as we're going to be seeing the Rainmaker pushing on the pedestal, being able to go for it, and we see the KO! iPad God said, uh, yeah, really no, we're not playing. Aggressive. Yeah, they, they said we're not playing this for that long. We're just going to end this right here. Well, they still got one more match to win, but the Unorthodox comp put on a lot of pressure, and they just kind of just kept going. They didn't stop. They kept their specials going and allowed the Rainmaker carrier to just move straight up and dunk it. And really well played by them. Now we're going to be going on to, looks like, Splat Zones on Skipper Pavilion. This is a Splat Zones map, and quite an interesting one at that. Definitely. It's very, uh, I personally don't see this very often, uh, but that also just might be because I don't play many tournaments. Uh, but very hmm. interesting with its ability, the very top area, which is very much used for its your ability to gra grab a lot of special points from up there and get off specials really quickly. It's a map that you have, your entire team's gonna have to choose who's going top, who's going bottom. This is gonna be if you're opening, you have to choose one or the other, and then you can't really rotate between them until you've got a bit more map control and you have a bit of zone control too. So teams have to be careful choosing who they want to go top, who they go bottom. Because if someone say goes the top route and happens to walk into the opposing team's backline, it's not gonna be great. But if they Undercommit to one route, they could end up just being pressured by the entire enemy team from another direction. Definitely. It's going to be very interesting to see. I personally am going to say this again, but I want to see that K-Junior come back out. They are always a great show, especially when they come out with their ability to get as many bubbles off as they can, and with the ability to insta-pop it with, that, uh, with the torpedo setup. And I think K Junior is definitely good here, like you said. I'd like to see that Zinc Mini or maybe the Brella, but it was the K Junior player too. And because the Brella could provide a lot of pressure with all the bombs, the shield, and Zinc Mini 
or any mini really paints a lot, has oppressive specials. I think they could run the same content here. Definitely, um, I would definitely not be a bad pick to run the exact same thing. Especially with all the ability of painting and the bombs and everything. It's just an immensely good, immensely good comp in any scenario, which definitely includes this one. Yeah. I think we'll see Fruit Basket circuit pretty similar comp. This is a map where if you get the right sight lines, Ray could be great. More likely we'll see V-Jet come out again for that missile spin because they're already painting so much they might as well spin missiles of their opponents from all angles while they're at it. And yeah. here we go. As we go on into Splat Zone, well, we just finished and talking Oh no, about the that. awkward, the awkward, the long loading screen, every Splatoon player's worst nightmare. And we do see the mini come out this time, a regular one, not a zinc one, and KG player said opting for a Sorella tent, which is a really great pick here because of how strong Curling Bomb Rush to be on this map. As we're going to be seeing two people duke it out on the top side, we're going to be seeing Team Fruit Basket taking one down on the side of the bucket as we're going to be seeing the rest of the Charger on the side of Fruit Basket desperately trying to get themselves into a good position to either get their special off or get into a position where they can try and hit someone. Missiles coming off on the side of IPAC Gods as they are just doing an amazing job holding down that zone with just two people on it right now as the rest of their team is pushing off trying to find themselves picks and kills right here. As we're going to be seeing two go down on the side of Fruit Basket being the Charger and the Bucket the iPad gods are being as aggressive as always. Two, go two more go down on the side of Fruit Basket as they're trying to make it go to be three as it now is three. As iPad gods are doing exactly what they do best in holding out and being heavily aggressive. Yeah, that's the last we saw go in there. Just walked in range to most iPad gods. And iPad gods still hasn't had to use their special. So they're doing a really good job in serving them. Now with all the bombs range to the zone, they'll pop the Booyah, they'll pop the Bomb Rush which will let them hold the zone for a lot longer. Another Booyah coming out. They lost a the member, but it's a 3v3, and they're just painting more. They saved up their specials, and they just kept painting, and their specials painted a little bit more, and that's going to be the game and the set for iPad Gods, who will move on to Grand Finals. iPad Gods showing that they are truly the god of gaming. Specifically on an iPad. Yes, Splatoon 2 on the iPad. I don't know how you're doing it, but it's probably a thing. Someone's probably find a way to do that. Probably. Maybe they're playing handheld mode. Perhaps. But, but like, you could somehow configure a touch screen to be the inputs instead, because reasons. Yeah. And with that, that's gonna be it for us. Butters finally gets a break, and... I get to leave? We're gonna be moving... We're light. moving on to the wonderful Half and Debbie. They're great commentators, and hope you guys like them. One more last thing. Uh, any social media or anything you want to plug? Butters, I because... Did. Tough from as a usual thing when yeah. you commentate, especially for as long as you did. Oh, uh, if you guys love my buttery voice, you can always catch me at my Twitch, which is uh, twitch.tv slash butterminer1245. I'm actually going to be streaming later today at 8 o'clock EST. You know, a few of our fr my friends are effectively running a podcast with a game on the side. Uh, but other than that, you can also catch me at my Twitter at butterminer one two. Uh, three five, where I will be starting to post stuff more often. I'm on Twitter at Strange Cork. I just retweet the threatening music notation account and some art. And with that, we're gonna be signing off. Have a great day, everyone, and I hope you enjoy Grand Finals.
Alright everybody, welcome back to Grand Finals of Launch Point Draft Cup number 8. I am Devi, joined once again by half, and I say once again because we commented Minnow Cup Grands yesterday, and now we're doing Grands here, so we're just that good. They wanted us here too. We're, just <laughs> oh, we're the MVP. <laughs> I mean, we got two really good teams here, Weird On versus iPad Gods. Uh, both, uh, I think, we're top one of the top four seeds, I think. Seed number four and versus seed number three. Obviously, seeds don't matter at all, as we learned throughout every tournament we watch. But um, two really good teams here. We obviously see Weird on with that Dynamo Charger comp and iPad Gods with I don't know what comp they're on, but I mean we're starting off with the Launchpad Classic. We got Splatoon's Wahoo, like great great start to Grants. I mean, who doesn't love this map? <laughs> this is a, a really nice map, especially since we just mentioned that there is a potential Charger Dynamo combo. Uh, that can be pretty nasty on Zones Wahoo, uh, as long as it gets control. Um, however, it can be bombed out, it can be missiled out. Um, but I imagine I imagine this pair definitely knows how to work around these specials. Because if you use that weapon long enough, you know how to work around it. You can play together with your other fellow range person, and then they can make it work. So. I mean, that dynamo on this map can just sit behind a little, like, ledge right there, mm -hmm. like, that can just sit there all day, and we already see our comps coming. We have the jet instead of a charger right here. We already have a mini in a tent. Really interesting comp. Looks like the mini's job is probably going to be able to take, just, like, keep that dynamo out of there. With the dynamo running up, Booyah Bomb spam, which Booyah Bomb is a really good choice on the map. Bomb can basically take control of the entire circle, but however, if more people are shooting through it, uh, the Booyah Bomb won't do a whole lot. <laughs> However, uh, I, I really want to see how this dynamo works as well because it can also counter the tent shield by just clicking over it and whatever's behind it if the mini does try to combo with the tent shield. Uh, but right now this dynamo's got a lot of control. There's one for one. It looks like someone tried to jump out. Dynamo here trying to see if he can get people away from the ledge, just getting more ink, putting sprinkler down. But it does get picked off by that inkjet. Nice shot by the inkjet. I mean, this tent right here is actually probably gonna have a field day right here. There's only one lethal that can actually sh like throw at the tent, and the tent can die right here. The tent's obviously right down, but looks like we're gonna have. I think I think that's the octopus back there trying to shark. Seeing that, seeing maybe that first one throw. I'm gonna try and chase them. There's the there's the two right there. It looks like they're gonna get the kill, and the other person's gonna fall. It looks like it's just gonna be a trade right there. It looks like the blue. I mean, iPad guys are probably gonna like take control. Mm -hmm. They just with that one uh, pick of so the follow up they still managed to come back. They're contesting zone. Dynamo gets a pick on the zone. Just look at how much control it has. <laughs> wow. I mean, with, yeah, and even though you mentioned, yeah, and even though you mentioned the one the one lethal, they do have still a lot of um, uh, fall off of poke over top with the help of the, the jet there as well. Even slowing it down with the mist because I think that is uh, that's the vanilla. Yes, it is. 
I mean, when Dynamo, when Dynamo is actually hitting your shots, and it's not like weirdly just dumb sometimes hitting just for like 90% damage, not killing. It's really good. But like, we already have iPad gods cleaning up, not preventing them from taking lead right there, which is really crucial right there. As you see the tent trying to hold their flat right there. It's the junior with armor, the tent right here. They're, they're gonna, they have no bombs against them. As the splash goes down, that's actually a really good kick from iPad gods. It looks like they're probably gonna be gonna extend to their lead. Mm -hmm. Tent is in the prime position, even just using their own curling bomb rush just to keep the pain up where uh, this mist isn't going to do much for him. But the missiles, oh, pushing back into the boot. That's such a nice combo. That's <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think the tent was expecting it, honestly. We see a full team wipe on, on the side of our pad gods. Look at the weird on trying to take control right here. The dynamo is just going to sit left right here. We have to try to attack that rail over there. They're just trying to hold left right here. As we see the jet right here popping missiles, maybe a little bit early right here. We see special weird ops just popping special a little bit early. As the splash sadly goes down, it looks like Akai Gods might have a chance. As the tent goes down, actually, and it looks like Akai Gods trying to push it with all their specials, and they get a nice kick on the dynamo. That's gonna prevent the paint from a lot. It looks like the junior is down. It looks like Akai Gods once again keep it. Mm, that was uh, nice counters from both. Like the the one side specials did look out. Yes, that they did come out uh, a little bit early, but uh, um, they're both countering each other really well. Like um, as it sits, none of them have gotten like a an overly too huge point advantage yet off of what they're doing. So they're countering really well, and it's going uh, really close side by side here. However, I've had gods are now two down. Um, and uh, two of the main painters go down on uh, Weird Autumn. So we'll see what can keep control. We see the Junior going down as well. So it's just the Dynamo left on zone and iPad Gods uh, is going to be taking control of the zone and they're gonna come right back. But we'll see what Weird Autumn has to count for this this time. But the Splash getting caught out again down below. I think they need to look at uh, the path of how they're uh, coming back in because they're getting caught out first uh, a couple times here when they're trying to push back in. Yeah, and they're like, they're only aggressive on the team. Jet can't really be an aggressor. Dynamo can't really be an aggressor also because he can't really paint that much. As I, Weird Autumn somehow takes zone. I don't know how they took zone right here. The tent trying to extract the splash. The splash finally gets the tent. And it looks like iPad gods are going to take the zone here with like a 2v2 going on right now. And it looks like they're in a bomb rush. I think Weird Autumn's going to get the zone right here just for a little bit. Maybe hold them off. Oh, wait, no, the Dynamo is, I think, just sitting behind him. Oh, no, that's, sorry, iPad gods. It's oh, a, yeah, 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 that's all right. <laughs> No, the tent the doing tent. a good job launching the shield, preventing uh, the cap from actually uh, like happening. So the tent's stalling a lot right here. But the Booyah comes out, still isn't really able to cap it yet. Like, th th this tent is doing a lot of perfect. Yeah, my tent, honestly, without any lethals, it's an amazing weapon. I mean, sadly, the like, meta right now is just a bunch of bombs to kick out. But right now, launch point, low level especially, tent can work out really well right here. We have 50 seconds left in the match. Weird Out needs to pop the arm right now and push in. Hopefully, their dad will just go down. 6, 5, 4, 3. This looks like a KO iPad gods taking game one out Wahoo Zones. Oh, my goodness. That was so, like, it was so back and forth in the middle. Like, both teams were doing great things just to counter each other to get zone back. But at the end, um, iPad Gods managed to capitalize on picking off that, that splash uh, twice on two when they tried to come back in. And that really, uh, like, they helped them secure more of a lockout. Because you can see the end, it became kind of more of a scramble because they had to work without the splash. Uh, the the Dynamo, the Jet, the, the Junior, they had to work without the Splash, so they had to be a lot more, like, patient there. And if anything, the Splash has to be more patient with a comp like that. Because if anything, you kind of let them come to you, and then you have the fall off, you have the extra sub. Splash would, once it's bomb rush to push in, it, you really have to make sure that the squad's working as a unit to make a comp like that uh, come back in effectively to secure a lockout uh, for themselves. Um, but ha yeah, having that splash picked off uh, pretty early on two potential comebacks uh, was pretty uh, huge for iPad gods. Yeah, especially not having like a, like an aggressive midliner. Like Don was not that aggressive. I feel like it's more like a painting special. But I think I think mm -hmm. um, I think Weird Arms right here. Well, Weird Arms probably gonna take advantage of this charger right here because it's Antro Tower. And you know how you can just sit up Sniper all day as a charger and just easily just pick up everyone trying to ride that tower. See, the thing that people want to make you think is that the snipe's going to sit on snipe all game, but that's not the yeah, case. I uh, definitely know. I definitely know backlines don't just do that, and I know I'm one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah. 
Maybe maybe the snipers. I feel like gonna go far left and try and get a pick on the like low, where the first checkpoint is. I feel like that mm -hmm. might be a really. I really like that doing a sniper right there, going out left, trying to get one, trying to just one catching one people off guard, trying to paint. That's how you get a really good like just. You can push it and get first checkpoint probably for free. Let's see our first game starting right here. Power control Ancho. I wonder if we'll see the jet maybe instead of charger, but I expect a charger right here. Oh, the there's the okay. jet. Uh, and the zinc mini. Zinc Luna. one. Is that zinc? Luna. Zinc mini. Okay, this is, is okay. zinc mini. Uh, I'm happy to see the Luna Blaster uh, in all honesty. Uh, I don't see too many of them, and I like seeing them uh, come out because they can be uh, really controlling under all of these ledges. If they just get paint underneath the ledge, the Luna just has free range uh, to help aggress what's above them, and even just pushing in street. So when the tower gets a push off, oh, this Luna's a menace to control. <laughs> you know, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen this count before. We have a 96 K Jr. Zinc Minion. Luna Blaster Deal, that's the bomber for the Really? I don't know, that's a really different cover here. Jaden, using that 96, using that just great advantage to hold, try and get that kill, trying to start to push, but sadly, a uh, weird on this is like, okay, since you guys all have the rest of us, we're just gonna sit back, you guys are gonna have to push us. And it looks like weird on right here, gonna probably take the power, he's gonna bring him up coming up. Jaden's trapped in the corner. Are they going to get the cancel? They're not gonna get the cancel, they're gonna get one, so that's a trade right there, that's a good trade right here. Do go down on weird off. Looks like that's gonna be the end. Not too much, but again, it's still really early in this game. Bubbles are coming out. I'm not sure why. Maybe I don't know if it was just maybe get the extra paint control. Um, I feel like those bubbles definitely could have been used more on like the left side or to clear more of the left side instead of mid when nobody's really there because they're just coming back in. Um, but yeah, okay, Junior's looking to control here. They're, they're playing a little bit back here because they know that the other team's going to push in. It looks like I think armor went off. Okay, yeah, playing around the teammates, they do get two picks. Uh, so the Junior's now gonna go take uh, middle here. Does have bubbles again. We'll see what they're going to do over this fan here and if they're going to launch them. So it's like that, it's probably gonna be first time I'm gonna knock that down. Great down right here. The Kajun's got a bubble trick right here. <laughs> and he sadly, the, the Kajun's walking. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Look at <Kesha. laughs> Oh my god. Just... It looks like there's three. Oh my god. There's so many on Cypher right now. I mean, Weird Ops is using that knife to advance right now. You can see the junior almost so strong right there. The Luna! Luna just pops out of nowhere again. Yep. Luna's, Luna's really actually going to to sink low, getting trades at least. And it looks like uh, I got guys are pushing up. They hit two down. Jick, really nice kill right there. And it looks like uh, two go down again for Weird Ops. Looks like I got guys are probably going to get the second check one right here. Mm -hmm. It's looking really good for iPad gods. Just catching people out of the Luna's in dominant control. They have their ranged weapons and some nice places to lock out corners. Um, looks like the Dynamo's trying to do some flick damage from this uh, top corner here, and this is kind of a prime spot to be in, especially when you know like the, the other checkpoint's probably going to be gone. So this is a really key point for the Dynamo because it just paints up that corner, did force that jump out, and now Dynamo's going to try and take control on this right side here. Uh, or left side, I should say, and uh, see if maybe he can get a couple uh, picks of people going forward. Does run out of ink, so is opting to pop that Booyah to get its ink tank back. And uh, and there's uh, one other, they have the Ray handy too. So Ray's coming out, Bubble Juice, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, Dino just read it through that, bro. Yep. Like, hold up, it looks like there's a flank right here on a Jaden right, I think that's Jaden. Jaden's trying to flank, that again take down, but actually, Great distraction right here for the Luna to be able to push up get the power right here. And it looks like they're just gonna sit back in here. Maybe I think guys are probably gonna play a little passive right here. They're not gonna add the phone number they're pushing up. It looks like Weird Ops <laughs> able to get able to get three down right here. And this is Weird Ops chance right here to get the first check one as they are right now. It looks like they've got two specials online and it looks like Weird Ops trying to make their push right here. As the, what is it, we see the, the jet with Ray in a nice spot here. This is a nice angle for the spray. It does spot one, and it looks like they're gonna try and go for another area. They do know where they are on the map, so they try to get a few picks. Uh, two do end up going down. It looks like it was a two for two, but uh, iPad gods do have the advantage in this fight here right now, stopping, uh, stopping the push that was uh, getting going there. It was looking pretty nice, but uh, iPad gods with a nice stop. Tom, Tom was weird on Tom, that if the K-Shot goes down, they don't have any, any like, aggressive weapon that can be able to push and maybe get a trade-off. So, like, when the K-Shot goes down, uh, I think they're able to just get a free, like, control right now. As we see the k Junior right here, looking to probably get a bubble trick right here on the super the fan. They're probably going to pop it right now. They're just sitting there still. I mean, we see 
Weird I'm still there. Guys, just waiting for the bubble right there. Oh yeah, no. no. Here it comes now. He gets the yep. dynamo. With the dynamo dead now, okay, the dynamo dead now. Look, he's gonna try for one more. Sadly does not get him. Sadly goes down. It looks like we're not gonna hit 2v2 right now. The Jet's the only one actually left alive. It looks like 50 seconds left, so it looks like this should be high pass game. Definitely looks like I've had that is a good job on the junior for waiting as long as that because a lot of times it's just you're sitting there out of play But if you look how everyone is it was on the map there It is it was just a neutral state like the junior didn't even really have to go and paint anything because the other team wasn't pushing Immediately like in a burst and then just as soon as they did move up when their teammates kind of got pushed back That's that was the time to go in, and that's what the junior did. And that was a really nice, patient bubble there. Also, we were saying, like, the, the K shot's kind of the only aggro. If you take a look, their dynamo is actually being kind of like the secondary slayer from how they're pl trying to play. Like, they're painting up, yes, but the positions they're taking are also uh, pretty aggressive. And I know uh, a good aggressive dynamo player does want to take those positions. And I do like seeing it. So the dynamo's definitely trying... To be a little bit uh or like to definitely be more on the aggro side it's just making sure like the junior can maybe also follow up with it just so that if someone gets close to the feet during a swing maybe like a splat bomb just thrown towards the dynamo can help uh with the follow off or follow up or push that person back so the dynamo can get the pick um really really works on teamwork there especially if like the dynamo is the acting second second slayer here yeah, agree, agree. I mean, speaking of dynamos, I mean, it's humpback. Okay, so <laughs> dynamo, I mean, it's humpback, but it's not splash, it's actually clamplet. So, I mean, this might mm -hmm. not be the strongest mode for dynamo. It still is. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, I mean, I'm in, I mean, the mode isn't that good just because you can't sit in one place, but like this map is like prime dynamo, like really good for dynamo, actually, actually really good for charger, also. So, I mean, also kind of, kind of weirdly good for Luna, kind of. They just decided to go Luna again, but like I expect maybe weird out to maybe take control to say right here in this game. Mm -hmm. We've seen kind of the the surprises they're throwing out, and uh, I always believe in these little surprises. Like I love seeing them; it's fantastic. Okay, so yeah, same oh same comp, and then we've got Ballpoint Tri Slasher coming out. So this uh, this is going to be a pretty big contender for the Dynamo. Uh, is this Tri Slasher? Because uh, it'll be it'll be Flick Wars. Uh, and just not being too close to the try, but um, the goal that this Dynamo wants to do is to keep moving like it has been. We've seen it moving around in several different places. You don't want to be stationary, especially on a mode like this. Not That me that goes for any weapon. You don't want to be stationary. You want to keep moving. Just kind of control an area, move to the side. We saw that happen here. We've got uh, one for one picks. Uh, Dynamo's going around. They're following this try. They know where the try is and they were going for it but uh it looked like weird autumn had a clam and they just were gonna try and go for it into the faces of ipad gods i don't really agree with that decision uh they definitely should have waited till they had a little more control because i'm pretty sure they knew that two members of ipad gods were just waiting there for <laughs> yeah no i mean i think i i we i saw try something like a buggy blitz now um especially <laughs> this map i i honestly expected a lot more even slots right here but like honestly we see a two go down on weird Out right here it looks like we have 13 clamps. Actually, never mind. Two go down also on iPad guys. Looks like they're trying to score the ball points trying to get the clamps. It looks like the Dynamo's just shutting down the push right here. Just sitting behind Legend. Trying to like kill the ball points. The ball points are probably going to have to back up here. And it looks like Weird Out really good defense right here. He's using Dynamo to their advantage right here. It's actually the Jet goes down sadly on Weird Out. Looks like iPad guys probably going to take a bit back. Actually, no, because the Dynamo's just sitting there. Hopefully, they can get a, they can get a quad right here. We'll see it. Yeah, see, the nice part is that this dynamo actually took the side angle instead of, like, uh, you see a lot of dynamos go under basket and use their flick to defend. This one took the off angle and uh, was able to just defend from the cubby there from both under basket and above it without going down. So this dynamo definitely knows it's facing very well and, and is uh, doing as much control as it can until its team can uh, follow up with it and uh, hopefully get a score for themselves here soon. And they yep, do get two down, so the time is coming. Here they go. <laughs> Looks like the, they have a pity climb here. Oh, sadly, going to be taken down by the K shot right here. And honestly, if I'm, if I'm the iPad guys, I found that push right there. But it's just one pity. This is that's easily overcomable, especially on this map right here. The Dynamo's still just right there. Like, we see the Dynamo just sitting there. They're trying to, like, bomb out the Dynamo, but not working. The Dynamo's just really good. Just holding there. See the ink jet. They're playing against the Dynamo right here. They hit the jet. They're trying to target the Dynamo. Diamond's gonna go down. It looks like iPad God's over here. Probably gonna destroy the city club. Maybe take me. 
Yeah, they're getting that uh, pick underneath as well. So now with that advantage, this would be their time to move up. They do get the score. They've got a bunch of clams underneath the, or, or on the wrong side, but they've got a bunch of clams to work with here. But Mist coming out and Dynamo flicks on top. That's hard to move in on. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Shot coming in and cleaning up. You know, that uh, making that a three down. I could have got the 37 right there, but the pitch off like they got one of the pities and they made one mm -hmm. of the iPad gods and even just retreat back. But that's still a really solid push right there. 37 iPad gods. Now now they got to force Spirit off to come out of their path and they can actually play. It's more aggressive right here. The case has to the case. The iPad gods are going to trap right there. It looks like the ball is going to go down sadly. It looks like iPad gods are trying to back up here. Word off taking the advantage right here. <clears throat> yeah, this is the team. If the Dynamo is moving up, I, I would love to see more of Weird Autumn's team move up with this Dynamo because this Dynamo is adding so much aggressive pressure, but I feel like the other two aren't following up with it as well as they could be because the Dynamo is like your extra heat supporter shield kind of thing. Uh, but uh, we're seeing the Dynamo trying to take the initiative. And uh, I really want to see this shot or Junior at least be up with it or trying to do something just in front of it so that they have the, the flick to help guarantee picks. Down here, the Junior popped up arm right here. We see the K Junior go down on the side of iPad Gods. It looks like Weird Alpha here trying to push him, but they just have any aggressive weapons right here. The K shot sadly goes down and they have to retreat back. They just can't afford that K shot going down right now. We have two down actions on the side of iPad Gods, but sadly the Junior is going to go down here. The Diamond trying to fight alive, trying to find a pick. Sadly, they're able to trade right here. There's still one more piece left inside of Weird Arm. Looks like I thought guys are gonna probably take the game. Mm -hmm. They picked up the two clans, so I I thought guys are definitely or not I think uh, Weird Autumn are visible right now, big time. We see the one was kind of up on their own in the corner. There's one far back. One's trying to get a cheesy flank here, uh, but it does get picked off, and that's a that's a nice there's, there's still a pity time under Weird Arm's back. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna, there I'm, is. I'm, Probably gonna send the case off far right, trying to flank my basket right here. There's a uh, my pack out there's tossing clamps that I think that's the octave ball pointer right there. It looks like we see a flank on far right, they notice it, the dynamo's trying to flank Look right here. Look at this dynamo go! <laughs> oh, but they score! And I thought gods looks like three down looks like they're gonna take game three right there on probably Dynamo's strongest map and looked like they're trying to they're trying to close out the set with a clean four off. Oh the desperation. This is this has happened in the in I, from what I've noticed in all three games is Weird Autumn's front line is getting shut down when they need the front line the most. Um, yeah. And then it literally has been leaving it to the Dynamo to try to do something. And I feel like the, like the Dynamo isn't the one that should be initially doing that. They should be following up with the one who's supposed to lead the way. And uh, But oh my gosh, I, I gotta give full... Full credit efforts for that Dynamo for trying to pull off that flank. Like, that is not easy to do, and I know the Inkjet spotted it out, but good job for tr trying. I, I gotta give them credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I mean, but we still, I mean, like, I wanna honestly cut cut out, I mean, cut out, I mean, like, rule out Weird Out right here. I mean, they still have four more games, and, like, they've been close every mm -hmm. single game. They haven't been, like, quick KOs. Like, that last game obviously wasn't quick KO. Wahoo World wasn't a quick KO at all right now, but nope. next year, next year, Manta Maria, and I think this is oh. really gonna, this is gonna hurt Autumn really bad, especially with their passive play style, because Rainmaker and on Manta, you can just end this game in like 30 seconds, especially if you pop right away and just go far right. Autumn needs to pick up the pace here, otherwise um, the iPad Gods is going to get a, a big advantage here, because as you said, you can see that, like, that they are playing more of a passive style. Yes, it can work in some scenarios, especially for defending, but on Rainmaker, you gotta definitely step it up a notch so that you can get the initial... You want the initial um, uh, start off uh, with aggression or that, like you kind of let them push, pick them off first, and then go, uh, is kind of how a comp like that needs to work. Um, but they really have to be aware of what iPad Gods is going to throw at them here, which is going to be a lot of aggression, or if... Maybe Weird Autumn might oh change it God. up a little bit. And and while uh, Vapor, I saw pointed out in chat, Jaden actually, could, if, they win, if iPad God wins this set, Jaden can win two in a row. We have a raid from Kiver. Damn. From Thank you, Kiver. Kiver, for that raid. Right in time to see maybe iPad God closing mm. out this set. But anyway, back to it. I think Jaden won the last launch point draft, draft cup. So if they win this one, I think they'll be the first player to win two in a row. Pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. Like achievement. Like, hey, I won two launch point draft cups in a row.
Really yeah, that's definitely a big thing. But we're going into this already, and uh, same comp uh, on the side of Weird Autumn. So let's see, or not quite same comp, but it's the the foil flings that comes out instead from uh, from Slug. So this is definitely more of the uh, the more aggressive roller, but can still paint really well. It's got the missiles. Um, we see Ballpoint, Tent, Forge. Not Forge. Oh, I keep thinking it's the Forge. The Apro. Yeah. Yeah, I keep thinking. Oh, I know, yeah. <laughs> and we see already here, like I was talking about, <laughs> pop right away. Being able to control that right side looks weird. He had three down a weird auto right here. I've got guys in front of him. The K Pro goes down there. He gets hit two action as he gets really good defense right there. As the Rainmaker actually gets one. There's two down right here. Uh, Rainmaker still out. Rainmaker goes down and looks like that's the end of the K Pro. Okay, they sadly died to the Rainmaker drop, but still, honestly, I would say that's a good, like, oh, but odd man for a Rainmaker. That's, that's probably not going to be the winning. Manta Marina, Maria Rainmaker is like how Turf works to me. It's either you KO or it's going to come down to like the last 30 seconds. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> there's so much that happens in mid and uh, what is it? Weird Autumn goes three down again. They're really struggling in these middle fights here. And I know they definitely have the comp that can control the middle area. It's just they're not, uh, they're not controlling these uh, the flank ways, they're not really respecting what's uh, holding up on Bunker here. Uh, they're just getting picked off a bit early so they can't apply this pressure that I know that this comp can have, and they're just going down one by one. In this case, shot, I mean, they gotta, they gotta honestly take control of this game and be like, hey Team K, I'm gonna take control of this game, I'm gonna, I'm gonna loot up the victory, this mercy right here, this Tent just sing a street. I, I don't think we realize, Tent is actually really good this map for you. I've got two die right here. Tent's probably calling out, oh, no. looks like they just fling the left. Looks like the fling is trying to make your hero play right here. Trying to save him. Looks like the third <laughs> actually gets the Rainmaker right there, bro. And looks like the Booyah is coming right here. Akka got trying to, trying to bump the Rainmaker right away. They're trying to hold up. Looks like 3, 2, 1, that big game. Oh, no, it's not the one, no, no, no. The one no, is not over yet. It's on the uh, pedestal, what? It's on the pedestal. They're That's trying game. so hard. This is close as it can be, but it, it's picked Wait. up. Rainmaker's splatted on the pedestal. Oh my oh gosh. gosh. It's back and forth. How did that happen? <laughs> they held anyway, the Rainmaker like, on the pedestal, the other team. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh my god. And then Weird Out finally just calmed down inside oh. the Rainmaker. <laughs> Wait. I was going to go. I thought, oh my god. Dude, that. Okay. As we see, I got guys popped. I think it's a Rainmaker right here, but they're probably gonna not, I don't think they're gonna be too aggro right I think they're gonna play more tent right here. So like, I'm gonna try and get the tent right here. The tent, really nice reflection right here. Reflection, reflection right there. Getting the, getting the, as the Stingray comes out, it looks like this tent might go down right here. The Stingray's trying to find the right, getting into Rainmaker, really nice ray right there. And it looks like, oh, weird off, really needs to take a breather. Autumn needs to take a breather. Uh, they're getting really scattered, as I'm noticing, and their two initial uh, slaying weapons, which is the K-Shot and the Flingza, are trying to go in and make these solo plays that aren't working because they're getting called out. They're getting like they're definitely getting called out uh, because you can see the path they're taking uh, to go do this, and um, they're getting uh, they're getting stuck in these fights that they're trying to take. I, I would love to see them working more together. Um, <clears throat> If, uh, if they can communicate that. But the biggest thing is I want them to take a breather uh, and just move in as a unit uh, and not panic as much because they've been going on a, on a very heavy stagger for majority of this game. And uh, they can definitely attempt this comeback in this last minute of play here if they just uh, find that way to group up together and uh, take down uh, the front line and then they can just keep going on and on and on until they can just push forward. Yeah, but the scary thing right here is ball foot. Oh, he dropped the great. So I was gonna say, you can just sit on greats all game yeah. and just hold there right there. So, I mean, weird options are trying to go in one by one, trying to get the hero player here. It's not really working right here. Looks like Akai got get the wipe right there. But it looks like they're probably just gonna sit in mid and maybe just sit right here. Maybe the ball foot's gonna go back in here. But I think the Aqua Shot is actually bragging up. I think that's 16 or. Mm -hmm. 16. Yeah, that's 16 kills from Aqua Really good control right there. The Lynx is trying to get, like, trying to hold right here, trying to get missiles or something. They get missiles, the Seagate actually goes, sadly goes down, so there's not going to be a ray right here. The Lynx is trying to drop here, the Capro knows they're there, and it looks like 10 seconds left. It looks like Ipad got probably going to win the Grand Prize here. The Lynx is 
tries to stick going. They're getting picked out of the game point. This is dead left. It looks like iPad gods your lot point draft cup eight champs and looks like <laughs> Jaden has run <laughs> and we see a little squid party and congratulations to iPad God and congratulations to Jaden for winning two in a row. That is a that is a big GG victory victory squid party there from uh, from iPad gods. My gosh, that pressure that they had on, but weird autumn didn't let it get fully KO'd. You gotta you gotta know that. Stopped it there, picked it up, just did what they could. Again, just they got a little too scattered uh, towards the end of that match. Uh, like we saw the K-Shot trying to do stuff. We saw Slug trying to pull off some great plays there on their own. But we just uh, just had to try to come together for a uh, group effort. Because we definitely saw that they can do it, especially in the previous uh, previous games. Where they were countering each other's specials really well and actually moving in and... Uh, getting what they needed done here. Here, iPad gods just definitely threw him for a loop. <laughs> yeah, I think I think iPad God just kind of stick with that aggro play sound. Just kind of hurt Weird Autumn. Like Weird Autumn, there, if the frontliner maybe would have got like one or two more picks, I think this could have been like two two right now. Especially like that Wahoo game, or especially mm -hmm. maybe that Humpback game. This could have been two two right now. We couldn't. This could have been four. This maybe could have been reverse sweep also. But like, thank you. Congrats to Weird Autumn. Second place. Still, still actually really good out of like a. I don't know how many teams there were, 20 plus, maybe, maybe 32, I don't even know. But congrats to Weird Army, congrats to iPad Gods for winning a launch point draft cut number eight. Uh, and with that, I think, uh, I think we're going to be signing off here, right? Yeah, and, and, and congrats to Donkey Kong Fan Club for winning Silver Bracket. I mean, really congrats. <laughs> Sil I mean, winning, honestly, winning a bracket just makes you feel good, especially like in SOS, winning, and winning any bracket just makes you feel good and gives you that just like, like feel good moment that why you're playing Splatoon comp. It's really a great experience. Definitely a uh, good job to all those who came to sign up. I know these draft cubs are, are definitely, they're a great way to meet new players and just uh, experience. Um, like you get to, you get to work around other players than what you're used to. It makes you figure out new ways of playing the game you get to learn from the others get their assistance and they're always great things to do so whenever you see these draft cups definitely look into them uh on the next yeah i mean but... launch point always producing the staff <laughs> here really really good staff right here led by moon wug obviously one of the best pairs of staff maybe the best pair out there um but thank you for i mean thank you moo wug all the launch point draft cup staff for having me as a commentator and I guess that's the end of it. That's the end of the launch point draft of eight. And uh, half, I know we did this yesterday, but uh, you know, a whole new area. Where can people find you? Oh, where can people find me? I guess I'm only on Twitter at 12 of 341. So that's one, two of three, four, one. And I mean, Devi, I heard you, you like playing Hydra. So if anyone wants to learn how to play <laughs> Hydra, I think they should go find out where you are. So where are you? Uh, you can find me. You can find me playing all this stuff on uh, on Twitch here, Devi underscore Doovy. I definitely bring out all my uh, all, all my Hydra tricks, including stuff with the vanilla. Yes, I make that. I make that usable. And uh, just on Twitter, uh, Devi Doovy. So yeah, that's yeah, where you'll find me. Yeah, one class. Congrats, <laughs> to iPad gods. Congrats for winning launch point draft cup eight. And I can't wait for the next one. Honestly, like the next one, maybe will be more exciting. This one. Pom poms to uh, pom poms to the to iPad gods. <laughs> yes, pom poms to iPad gods and Donkey Kong. <laughs> yes, and Donkey Kong fan club. Yes, congrats everyone.